Hello, friends. Welcome back to part two of episode 218 of I'll Call You Right Back podcast with me and uh, Stephen Jaskulski. Uh, last week, I sat down with painter, artist, all around good human being, Stephen Jaskulski, uh, known by many as Jazz. I feel like that I can't call him Stephen. I feel like I got to call him Jazz. That's just how I know him. Uh, but uh, yeah, second part this week. Before we get to the episode, got some important things to talk about. Uh, next week, we're kicking off Halloween uh, season. We're going to start the spooky episodes. Uh, next week, I'm sitting down with uh, Ricky Dick of Castle Blood in Manesson. It's a haunted house. This is his 30th year doing it. He is the man. Talked to him uh, years back, probably three years ago. Uh, but Castle Blood, my favorite haunted house in the city. And uh, I was pumped to sit down and talk to him again. I got some other spooky shit happening up in October. Uh, important stuff that, that, you know, this is a new development and I'm very excited about it. Tomorrow night, Friday night, you, the, t- the, the team's getting back together. Me and John, aka Odd Pittsburgh, are coming back little deja vu for a Halloween special. Uh, last episode with me and John was a banger. <clears throat> very, very highly reviewed throughout the city. You know, I still have people messaging me. John told me that the other day, whenever I was on the phone with him, he was like, I'm still having people messaging me about the episode. And I knew that we had to get him back on uh, for a strictly just spooky shit episode. So uh, I'm interviewing with him on Friday night. It's going to be crazy. Uh, if you guys know of any, you know, if you are Halloween people and you heard a weird story or you know something about Pittsburgh that has to do with some spooky shit, please, I encourage you to slide in my DMs. If you got a weird story, if you got something like that, I encourage you to slide in my DMs. Uh, uh, before Friday night, because me and John are going to sit down for a, I know it's going to be a long one, and uh, I'm very, very excited for it. But back to this week, the reason that everyone is here. Like I said, this week is a two-parter, or uh, the second part of a two-parter, but I sit down with Stephen Jazz Kulski, aka Jazz, for uh, another great conversation. Uh, well, actually, not another one, but the remainder of a great conversation about his life and his journey into becoming an artist. Uh, last week, we talked about, you know, kind of how uh, some crazy events in his life uh, led him to to pick up a paintbrush. And now this week, we're going to kind of button all that up. We're going to talk about his, you know, his stint that he did down on Venice Beach. I don't know if you've ever been to California, but if you've been on Venice Beach, it is a wild environment. You know, you got numerous, numerous street vendors, all different types of people. uh, And uh, Steve was, you know, I I feel weird calling him Steve. I got to call him Jazz. Jazz was a vendor in Venice for the better part of four years and uh it's just wild some of the stories he has you know the dude is just you know a straight hustler and uh i'm happy to know him you know like i'm i'm really happy that i got a chance to sit down and talk with him and learn about what he does and uh how he has kind of got to this point in life because it's pretty fascinating. So I'll quit talking your ear off. I'm excited for next week. I'm ex- hell. I'm excited for today. I'm excited for next week. I'm excited for the following week. You know, I'm just I'm pumped about it. Uh, again, next week, sitting down with Ricky Dick of Castle Blood in Manesson. I'll be giving away some tickets. Come on back next week. I'll give you some details on how to win them. But without further ado, episode two eighteen, part two. Of I'll call you right back podcast with Steven Jazz Jazz Kulski. I gotta use the telephone. Hello. I'll call you right back, podcast. First time ever? First time ever. Is that the first hallucinogen you've ever taken? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, it was. And that's the first time I ever tripped. And man, it was the craziest thing because like I 
you know, I came out with like six and like six or seven new paintings that night that were better than anything. Uh, you were painting while you were. Tripping. Oh yeah. And okay, I was yeah. in my element, dude. Like yeah. that was like where I was like, Oh shit. Like I thrive in this weirdness. Like, you know what I mean? Like this is where like, wow, I feel comfortable, you know, which was, I was expecting to be like, Oh, you know, seeing shit melting, you know, and, and you do, you know, and everything like, but, um, but it was like, I was like in my element for real. And, but I came out, I remember I painted all night. I came out in the morning. I looked at this, the sky um, and it was like this beautiful sunrise, dude. And I just knew, like, it was like the, the sky opened up and told me or something. I, I knew that um, I had found, uh, like, like, like this was literally like the reason why I'm even on this planet. Um, like, I, I knew that I would be favored in it. Like, I knew that there would be some, like, I knew, like, whether it was God or, like, whether it was my angels or what, whatever it was, something was telling me, like, all right, dude, all this shit, like, think about all this stuff you did to find this, and, and, like, this is it. This is it. This is Focus really on it. it. I never felt like that in my, I, I mean, I, me- I remember looking up at the sky, just crying and crying, being like, thank you, like, thank you, you know, because, um, for giving you, like, this direction, like, some sort of, like, direction to go to. And I could, I could see it down the, the line man like I could see like like I was not just gonna do this like you were I was be gonna successful. do I was gonna be successful and it was gonna like bring something like to this world that like it's important like and I never did anything for any anything in this really world that was important baseball is great for me yeah um but it doesn't really leave anything for anyone else no it's validation for you and maybe for the whole team at the end. Yeah, it's a relief for people, entertainment. You yeah. know, watch, go watch a ball game. You, now, you said that you saw this down the line, it also like kind of like your the reality of what's going to happen yeah. and like mm-hmm. what you want now. To me, the first thing I think of is that, like, you know, that's such like a blessing because it's like if you already see that, you know that it, now it's just time to work because it's going to be there. It's like, I know that I'm going to be successful in this. And like, you know, I already seen what's going to happen. Now I just got to be true to myself and true to my work and true to my craft. Mm -hmm. And just like really like put in the hours and get to work. It's like something like that kind of what was in your mind. Well, it still wasn't even like that, that to me yet. Like I still looked at it like, um, well, I had to figure out how to go about like everything still. You know what I mean? I still had no idea. Like those pieces that you made while you were tripping, like were those like visually like highly, like were those like levels above what you were oh, making? Oh yeah, dude, like a cheat code. Wait, like, now where are those pieces at? I sold them all. Venice Beach. And I would sell everything, man. I would sell. Did you ever have like any sort of like, you know, I interviewed a knife maker last week mm-hmm. and uh, it's my buddy who like, you know, just randomly started picking up and making knives. And now he makes these like absolutely beautiful pieces of artwork. And I asked him the same question. I was like, you know, do you ever have like an attachment where you like can't get rid of that piece? It's like you, you were like battling something while you were doing that piece that like just has a piece of yourself in it that you're attached to. It, it is like that now, but even now it's more on like a subconscious level where I, where I, where I won't think I would want, you know, where I'm like, yeah, I'll let anything go. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, cause I want it to be out there with somebody else. I got, I have to believe that the next ones will be better. Yeah. Um, mm. that I'm going to find, you know, like, a, like a, even a new gear on the next one. This is yeah. a step to the next thing. Yeah. Right. So I, I have got caught up thinking like, these are going to be in museums one day. Like I got to hold on to this. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm gonna, yeah. you know, this is going to be an important one. I got to hold on to it. And there are some that are like that, but, um, you know, for the most part, I, I would look at it like, oh, I need, these need to be out somewhere. You know, these need to like, you know, they can't be, I can't have them sit in the studio. I only got so much wall space here. Yeah. And you don't want, you get tired of looking at your own shit anyway. I bet. So, um, you know, just sit in the studio. So I figure like, yeah, well, those people will be able to get into a museum too. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. they can like, and that's the thing, you know, long, long time. Like, yeah, I get it. But um but that's like the you know there's that's not like it's not a weird thing to think about at all. It's like, you know, that's it's fascinating to hear, you know, the thought that goes into it all. And that's why I ask the questions. It's like, you know, it's fascinating to kind of like because you know, we are we're already seeing like the point that you're at now, you know, incredible artists now. It's just like, you know, I want to know your mindset in that period of time because it's going to help paint this picture. So it's like, I'm trying to like even 
that's why I'm asking these like kind of bizarre questions to like kind of feel uh, feel where you are at that period of time because I knew you said you were in Venice and you're just selling these pieces on the beach. Mm-hmm. I wanted to ask you about that because I know it got to be crazy. Oh yeah, I was out there a couple times and like Venice is definitely the wildest, most bizarre place that I've experienced mm-hmm. because. You know, you got every type of vendor there. So will you right. like kind of tell me, will you walk me through like, you know, when do you got to get there? How do you even like get a spot there? You know, all that. So I had, a, <coughs> I, when I moved in to um, my apartment, I had three r- roommates that were already there. One of them was from Santa Monica, uh, Ben Brady, uh, my good friend. And he, um, he told me, man, you should take this stuff down to Venice Beach. Like, you know, he was like, that's what people do. Like, everybody sells their stuff. Like, he was all hyped for me. I just met him and stuff. And he was like, this is so cool, dude. Was you anyone just... buying your shit beforehand? Oh, no, absolutely not. I mean, I don't even think I was, really, like, posting it or anything. Okay. Like, I wasn't even thinking about it so much. Um, even having to sell it or whatever. I just go keep it outside or let it get rained on or whatever. Yeah. I wouldn't even care. Um, but then he was like, man, you should take some of this stuff down to Venice Beach, you know, and see how people, you know, maybe you'll do really good down there. And um, the first day I went, I sold, I think, like two or three pieces. And I think I only sold them for like 15 bucks a pop or something, maybe 20 bucks a pop. But I was like, holy shit, man. Like, you That's know, a I possibility. Sold some, I sold my first pieces. Um, I, I I was drinking Jameson out there or something. You know, <laughs> I called the Cheesecake Factory and I was like, fuck you guys. Like, I'm not coming back in. <laughs> I was like, there's no two week notice. Like there's nothing. I was like, it's done. And, um, uh, and I was, you know, like I literally called them like down on the beach and told them like, that's the best. Yeah. And uh, he said, you, I love that you prefaced everything. Was, I was drinking Jameson out there. Yeah. I was, yeah, I was a little drunk and but I, Dude, that's so dope. First day you're out there, some pieces get sold. And like, that's like all the fuel you need to be able to think like, you know, this is a fucking possibility. Yeah. It's like, this is just shit that I just started. It's like, imagine if I put some, you know, I'm just finding myself, man, that's dope. And it it was so great, man, because I would, you know, I'd have to come up with all these new pieces, um, these smaller pieces and stuff. And I'd have to like take them down and I'd find out right away from people what they felt and what they thought. And people don't give a shit about you out there, right? So yeah. I, I would have people come up and be like, wow, like, this is amazing. Like, and then I'd have people come up and be like, what are you doing, dude? Like, are you sleep down? You sleep down here? Like, yeah. people just come up and be like, are you homeless? Like, you <clears throat> really? Know? Yeah, and I'd be like, well, no, no, I'm not, man. But like, you know, like, you know, people people come up and say however they feel down there, really. Like, they don't like, that's so I, what I mean, it's a wild spot. Like, just experiencing that is like someone from Pittsburgh. It's like, that's a wild experience. Like, mm-hmm. every type of vendor, different types of people. You got people that are like, you know, down on their luck out there. And mm-hmm. it's like, I don't know, you're an experience everything. That's wild to hear that people were just be walking up to you saying crazy shit for a long time, you know, and it would, it made me be able to handle criticism. And maybe be able to handle other people's opinions on my stuff to understand that like somebody might see me as like like this gift like to earth or something you know like they'll be like whoa like you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna make millions of dollars like you're gonna be a famous artist you're gonna be in museums you're, you're like your your future is so beautiful and then some people be like you're fried man like yeah. your, your shit's fried are you all right like yeah. you know like ain't, <laughs> And, and, but you get good with like respecting like people's opinions. Did you have a problem with that in the beginning? Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. When your stuff? hurt my feelings so bad. Yeah, yeah. People would hurt my feelings every day. And I would be like, what the hell, man? Like, yeah. Cause I'm real nice to people. I'd be out there like, hi, how are you guys doing? I like, get it. You know? So people would come like, you know, catch me by surprise and like, you know, rip me like a new one. And I'd be like, okay. But, um, <laughs> I got to check myself real quick. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, like, and, and, and so it, it was really cool. And, and, and being on that other side, you know, the Venice beach is a crazy place. Yeah. But being on that other side of the boardwalk, like where all the, the vendors are. Right. Yeah. So that has its own unwritten rules. Like the homeless community. It's like a whole thing. I was immersed in a homeless community for four years. Yeah. Um, and I made my way into the top. Like I, I really like, I was, a, I, I made it so many i made my way there because i was a good person i made my um i treated everybody with her so i was always a cigarette guy you know people come up with me and go over yeah. the alley and smoke cigarettes people would hang out with me all day just to talk to somebody yeah um 
So at first, like you can't just go, you, you couldn't just go down there because it's territorial and you're taking somebody's spot, right? Yeah. And so you got people screaming at you, throwing shit at you. That's how it worked though? Is it like first come, first, first serve? First come, first serve. Okay. Um, how, how, what time did people get out there? Nine like? in the morning, you're allowed to start setting up. Oh, okay. Um, so you can be out there, but you can't move your stuff into the little squares on the boardwalk until nine o'clock or whatever. All right. And, um, but you know, you know, you couldn't get a spot right away because people would be like, hey, that's, what's his face's spot? He's not here yet. Or, you know, somebody would be screaming at you. You'd be like, well, I don't see, dude. You know what I mean? And, and, yeah. But you, I had to get acclimated into all of it first. There's a hierarchy out there. Oh, yeah, man. Because, for sure. Because, like, hey, there's own, their, their own rules down there. Like, um, for real, the cops, they walk the boardwalk and stuff. They're just looking at women. They're, they, they're just, they're, they're not even, like, there. They're giving people tickets for open containers and shit. Yeah, but between the people that are there, it's a, there's a code. There's a code. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, thieves get, like. And then you don't want to, like, you don't want to, like, you want to make sure you come correct because, like, this is a community. People will cast you out, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 because you don't want you know you you don't yeah you don't want to be on people's bad side it's too many problems yeah um as a young kid out there you're what like how old are you out there now uh, 20 21 yeah i mean like is this like you know like are you someone that is like you know were you someone that was naturally like a loner uh like like because are you're out there by yourself doing this you have all these people that were like you know the, the, the people you don't know you're just out there by yourself like are, are you someone that would consider yourself because I feel like I would be almost like I'm someone who could pretty much adapt anywhere, uh-huh. but I know some people are like kind of like introverted mm-hmm. and I make a, you know, a stereotype as an artist that's like, you know, just in their, you know, attic, just painting forever. Mm-hmm. It's like, are you someone that was like open to oh, yeah. conversational and everything like that in the beginning? Oh, yeah. 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 I mean, being, I love talking to people. I love meeting people. I talk to everybody the same. I don't care if you're a stranger. I don't care. I just like bullshitting with you. you yeah. Know? And um, so, yeah, I, I love being alone. I spend most of my time in the studio alone, you know, and just and just working. And, uh, and I enjoy my time alone. But I also love people, too. Yeah. I, love, I, 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 I just, I'm the same exact way. You know, so I can be, you know, either one. But when I got out to the beach, it was just like... Um, Man, I just hear so much, you know, you you, you really just like, because everybody's from somewhere different. Everybody has an interesting story. You know, most people go down to the boardwalk, they write somebody off like, you know, like, oh, they're just a fucking, you know, they're on drugs or this, that. But like, you know, really interesting, man. Like a lot of people, you know, you you meet people from all over the United States, different stories. You know, oh, yeah. Uh, you know, but I, you know, I enjoyed, uh, I knew that that's how I could fit in. I knew I had to start talking to people and my, these old men and stuff to hang out on the beach, you know, been alcoholics on the beach for 10 years, <clears> you know, like you would see all these groups of people and shit and it would be a little bit intimidating and stuff. But, um, you know, uh, no, I wanted to get out there and I wanted to, to fit into it, like, which was kind of strange. Yeah. Um, but be part of that community yeah, rather just, than just a visitor. Right. And uh, yeah, exactly like because it was it's so different being on the other side, um, and you know like I would see, I would see some the, the guy walking down the boardwalk right, and he's he's screaming f you know he's f this, you know he he just you know scream at the top of his lungs just uh, you think he has Tourette's or something just obscenities and you know I'd go up to that guy I don't know what made just being young and curious I guess like I would see like that guy doing that and I'd be like does he have Tourette's or like what's going on here? And I walk up to that guy, I'd be like, Hey man, you need a cigarette or anything? You good? And like, you want, and he'd be like, yeah, yeah. And I go over to the alley with him. And now he's telling me his life story and he's speaking like a totally normal human being, but he was just going down the boardwalk screaming at the top of his life, only just swear words and shit. And, um, so I was like, damn. And then I would see his perspective. Like he can walk down this boardwalk with thousands and thousands of people and he can just scream. He can just cuss over and over and scream. And nobody even looks at him, man. Nobody even looks at this guy. And, uh, so I'd be like, no, he, it's rational. He feels like insane like this. Like it, it really is like normal that he feels this way. Cause like you're screaming, you're screaming. Nobody will even look. Everybody's like, don't look, don't look. You yeah. Know? So, um, I would just learn so much. Like I became a different person just by my interactions. Um, just by talking to people, being curious and stuff. And, uh, yeah, man, like, uh, I've seen everything on that beach, just about like everything. You were you were selling art there for four years. Four years, and yeah. like, how often were you down there? At almost every single day. 
you know, I need, I need a, you know, a couple of days a week to like get work done. And I work yeah. down there too. And, um, but like every day it was like, it's um, like how, and what time are you there till? Until it's, sun goes down from oh, nine wow. o'clock till the sun goes down. Wow. Um, that when, is crazy. Yeah. So, you know, I set up all day in the sun and for the most part, it's tough to get down there. Um, how far did you live away from there? About three and a half miles. Okay. So how, like, how would you commute down there with all your pieces? I think at the beginning, I'm trying to think if my storage unit came first. I pushed a storage unit. I would Uber to my storage unit, which was about a mile and a half from the beach. Yeah. And I would push a cart um, with all my paintings and stuff from my storage unit. A mile and a half. A mile and a half every morning. Um, wow. Sometimes it's just bungee cords would snap. Shit would fall on the street. Got a whole line of cars beeping at me, paintings in the middle of the road. And sh- <laughs> dude, it was, it was, it was tough. And, um, but yeah, I pushed it from my storage unit. I'd see all the other artists at the storage unit getting all their stuff. And, you know, uh, yeah, and I would walk it down for a long time. And, uh, but I, I would want to need to do it every day because it, it really felt like I could make anything happen. Yeah. Um, with the reception I was getting from people. Like I couldn't, couldn't miss a day because that's my lottery. You see people go play a scratch off every day or they go get the Powerball or whatever. Yeah, this might that be the That was day. my lottery. Like every single day gives me a chance to be out here with this stuff. Now, can I ask you, uh, like in this early of like being an artist, like how are you putting a price on your paintings? You know, like how do you, how do you like put a, a value on something? Um, I didn't, think about it too much because my rent was not much money you know yeah. I, mean, I only had to have 500 bucks total a month for all my stuff right yeah so um i didn't really care how i got to 500 like you know what i mean and i still am like like that with people sometimes you know where um like i have my price points but then i'm like well this young dude like really is getting emotional about this shit. you know what i mean like whatever he can give to me it doesn't hurt him like i would do that you know um so you know, just so he could have it. And so I never thought about it too much, man. I'd be flipping stuff for 25 bucks, 30 bucks, 40 bucks. And I would get up a little bit more. I would raise prices as I would sell more. Yeah. And, um, you know, but I just started putting stuff. I thought people would be able to like afford first, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and like, you're starting to like, from the beginning, like, are you, are you just like from the big jump, like getting good feedback from people yeah. and like selling work? Yeah, yeah. So it was great, man. People were telling me crazy stuff right away. You know, like people come up and be like, "You're gonna, you're gonna do this. You're gonna do, this. you know." You're like, "Really? Like, damn." Okay. Yeah. You know, like word. Like I'm cool with you know. I'm I'm game for that. And uh, you tell you're gonna do everything and be you know super successful. And yeah, I was getting great feedback. I mean, yeah, just having anybody be able to stop and talk to me about it was just like insane to me because I'm like, I made this and now. People have interest in it, you know, they really like, and people get emotional about stuff too. And I it would just trip me out, like, whoa, um, you know, and, and the bad feedback too, you know, I cut take pieces out there, and I you people, you know, I could see like if everybody comes up and they really love this one, but people are like, ah, what the hell are you doing there? You know, I'm starting to see like, okay, like I'm onto something there, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, people feel that one, <clears throat> and um. You know, that's how I started developing different styles and stuff, just based off of like what okay. people gravitated towards. Yeah, and I mean, and that allowed me to experiment so well because if I'm selling all these paintings, I gotta sell them all. Like, you know, I gotta sell a bunch in a day. That's when they're cheap like that. I need to get rent. I need to make something happen, and um, so I'd have to always be making a lot more and experimenting. I was just ex- trying everything, right? And um, you don't do that so much as you develop a style or you develop a few certain styles. You kind of just like perfect those styles. But at the beginning, man, it just allowed me to just try, throw anything I wanted at the wall and just see what, you know, is going to stick with people. Yeah. And um, yeah, it was great because, and I always had to make new stuff. So I was always making art, making new kind of stuff, seeing if it works. Um, it just had me like changing all the time and growing at the same time. Like the progress came because, that's what the, the the force you know the, the beach forced me to be like that to always have new stuff to show yeah. exciting stuff to show <clears throat> yeah because um, like you know just because it's not even just you there it's like how many vendors are down there a lot um and like it's like all different types of shit it, so it's like you know to have people be able to like you were saying like if you could ever have people just stop and like you know look at your artwork it, it means a lot but 
you know, not just thinking about you being the only one down there. You got to think of like a whole boardwalk. I'm talking about people that are listening. You mm-hmm. know, it's a whole boardwalk of just like people with all different things to vend. So it's like for anyone to be able to just like get that attention caught to where they like focus on your work is like, you know, that's dope. Yeah. And and then I also realize what makes a difference with this stuff too. You would see all these older guys, all these older artists out there. You couldn't even walk up to their stuff really. Like, you know, if you pulled your phone out to take a photo, they might throw some shit at you. Oh uh, yeah. You know, like get out of here, no photos. Like, you know, people were really abrasive, right? Yeah. And they were all like a lot older and struggling, right? And I was like young and I'm being from Pittsburgh, I just want to say hi to everybody. Like, hi, you know, yeah. how are you guys doing? I, I like just how I talk to people. Oh, and, that's uh, interesting. You know, because we're kind of like that, you know? Yeah. Like, really, like when... Like, more open. More and, open. And, and like, other people... You, you mean, like, these older guys are, you know... I get what you're saying now. It's like, some people, if they're not approachable, like, you yeah. don't even want to go up and look at their shit because, like, they just are, you know... But if you got a nice dude that's like you, it's like saying hello, it's like you start a conversation and it just, like, starts that, like... That in that that uh that potential of yeah. of of things yeah it builds that bridge and then like, yeah it builds that bridge mm-hmm. and you know and then I realize like that I realize out there that's how I'll build this whole thing is like through you, you don't think that it's possible everybody I'm cynical and stuff I look at this world and like everything fa- everybody wants things fast everything's you yeah. know what I mean no matter what it is it's hundred percent it don't have to mean anything to anybody and like we don't even think about shit on a day to day basis. But I was like, or and nice people don't win a lot of things, right? Right? And um, yeah, you know, nice, you know, nice guys finish last, right? So, but I, but I figured like, um, if there's anything I got, it's a genuine connection with people, and it's built, and it, that's what the art. Because I don't even know what's happening when I'm making it, but they're coming up and they're feeling it. I don't know them; they're a stranger. We're connected though, right? And yeah, so, but it's like you're taking energy from them too. So it's like you know, you're, it's it's all just like productive. It's like you're you're you're, you're having this like this meeting you're you're having this like interaction with someone and it's like that person is giving as much to you as you're giving with them Mm -hmm. and it's like in that same situation being someone who's like a tourist like whenever we went to venice like that's how like you know like that's what i enjoyed is like someone that's like a local out there and you're not necessarily a local but in that time you're a local yeah and it's like to have that opportunity for someone to just like take some time to talk to you it does mean a lot on the on the flip side of it too you know it's 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 really uh it's interesting to think about that as far as like being you know a vendor in that whole life was there any negative like did anyone ever like steal your shit or anything oh, like yeah, that yeah 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 so those are, i've seen <laughs> said, a oh, lot. yeah yeah yeah, yeah I man i've seen i mean you all have to be vigilant down there yeah um, i mean i've like, seen people get messed up too like um like beaten down by like a whole squad of people you know i've watched like some gang beatings down there just prefer people stepping the wrong way you yeah know? um but yeah there's always bad people um and down there, uh, there's a lot of good people. Like, yeah. And don't get me wrong. I mean, like, those people look out for each other, like, and they look out for other vendors, man. A lot of people, like, made sure that I was okay uh, all the time. But, yeah, I mean, uh, a lot of really weird experiences, bad. Um, I try to get ones that aren't too, that make me sound too insane. Um do you, do you think that you sound... In, I don't think anything oh, that you've in, told me is sound insane. Well, like, if I get into, like, what that was like, like it, with what that was like every day, and um, it, it gets really... I mean, what I s- would see down there was just insane. Man. I would love to hear it, if you, um, would, if you would share any of it. Uh, so, like, you know, you would meet celebrities and stuff down there, too. You know, you'd have, like, you know... Um, you're you're dealing with the most insane people you ever met in your life, but you also have like Draco Malfoy is like chilling like over here, you know, like fucking <laughs> what is you know yeah. whatever that guy's name is, yeah. I forget. But um, you know, you it's it, it's so that's already like a weird thing. That's wild to think about that because like in that area, it's such a popular place. You have like the celebrities, but you also have the people that are having like mental breakdowns and shit. Mm-hmm. Wow, I never thought about that. Yeah, it's weird, and like a lot of those people that like live down there. Um, the locals, you know, um, they have a connection with everybody in the community on the beach as well. And um, so there's like a, you know, they help them out. Like the, the guys work for them, like help yeah. them do stuff. Like, um, man, 
uh, it, it is a really weird paradigm down there. And people are just weird. Everybody's weird, a little bit weird. You know, everybody's, you're in California, you know, you're just doing your own thing at this point. All those people um, doing their thing for a long time. Um, I'm trying to give you some like weird. Uh, That's all right. Is there people that are vendors that have been there for like, you know, oh, 20 yeah, years? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay. So, yeah. So, like, the, a lot of other vendors wouldn't like me necessarily right away, artist wise. Yeah. Um, like, people selling like wire butterflies and shit. Like, you know, I get along with, you know, everybody. Yeah. But there would be a couple of dudes that were like, it's competition for them. You know what I mean? It really, at the end of the day, you know, you're trying to beat them to get money. Yeah, for sure. Um, you don't want to go broke. Like, you don't want to, you know, you want to have something to eat at the end of the day. Um, so yeah, yeah, there's a lot of older artists down there, um, that are just kind of like, and yeah, that'll, that'll want to fight you, man, for, you know, nothing just for being, just for being down there. There's this guy, uh, Arthur, uh, he had a chance to be like a really big artist, took him to France. He's the Venice beach success story, but he never, he didn't make it. He, yeah. um, he squandered it. He's, he's, he's mean to people and shit, man. You know what I mean? He's just, he's not really like a nice dude. Yeah. And, um, so whatever opportunity he had in France, I guess didn't work out for him. He's still on the beach, hmm. um, screaming at people, yelling at people, telling them to get, get the hell away from me. You know, I don't know how he, uh, you know, expects to sell anything, but, um, saying um the, the other guys they, they had interesting stories man like there'd be i always sit up next to a dude that actually was homeless under the brooklyn bridge um for a long time and it's hard to be homeless in new york you know what i mean in the winter time that's just so brutal yeah but this dude won the lottery he won the he, he won a i don't know how i forget what he won he won he's rich now what? he just spends his whole time out there he's a rich dude he has a house in hawaii has a house in la and um yeah, he just has this real colorful stuff, like Jesus. real colorful little paintings and stuff. But yeah, this dude was homeless under the Brooklyn Bridge, hit the lottery. Wow. And now, so he was one of the dudes I set up next to. That's wild. Well, what happens like, you know, if you're working there for four years and you, you know, you're establishing yourself down there, you know, like what happens to where you stop selling at the beach? You know, like how does that stop? Oh, well, you know, that's how everything happened for me. So like the, all the collector, all the people that bought my stuff for $25 at the beach became my whole collector base. Like all these people, I mean, they come back to LA every year and they want to see me. I become part of their, their life somehow. You know, a lot of these people, they found me, they discovered me, they, you know, and they, they, they bought when I was just starting. So I have all these people that just bought something for super cheap. Now they're like really taking me seriously. Like, and it means something. Yeah. So I had this collector <clears throat> base to show up and support me so when I first started getting into art shows, and then the same way through Venice Beach, somebody would come up to me and say, hey, man, this gallery, I think this gallery would like to show your stuff. Yeah, that's what I was just going to ask. Like, how do you even, like, get approached as, like, an art show? Yeah. It's, it's be- like, how many years in of you being on the beach do you start to, like, you know, I, I get it. I, I get that, like, how many years into the beach do you, like, realize that you're, like, you know, this is really, like, becoming where you want it to become. Like I know in the beginning it's obviously great and you're selling it, but it's like, Mm -hmm. when are you starting to like realize that like you're starting to be able to like hone what your style is and like how you want to like do this. And like, obviously you're getting better at what you're doing and the price of your paintings are going up. It's like, what, how far in does that happen? Oh man, maybe about two and a half years in, you know, um, and, and it was always just like a positive outlook of like, you know, I'm going to make it there. Like things are going to, everything. Is oh yeah. I going. knew. Yeah, yeah. 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 I knew it would all be, I knew that it would there was be. never any quit. Like where you were just oh, like, no. this isn't going to work. No, no, no. That's I, great. I never dude. I, I mean, no, I believe I, you know, I most stubborn human being on the planet, man. Like <laughs> nobody could tell me otherwise, you know? So, I love that though. So I believe that that was like my, like a prophecy, like, um, written way before I even started this lifetime, you know, yeah. like it, it, this was something that, that was just meant to be. And, um, so I never doubted it. I would get sad. I'd be like, oh, I want to be in a gallery one day. I want to show my stuff. I don't, I don't want people to talk to me like this anymore. You know, I don't want, I don't want to, see fights all day and I want to see, you know what I mean? I don't want to see this shit all day. Like I'm tired. Was that something that you as an artist could like approach and like try to get into as gallery? Oh, that's funny. Yeah. No, you you don't have that opportunity in the art world necessarily to approach anybody. Okay. Um, So it's all name drops who, you know, like that type of type of stuff. 
Um, cause I've gone into galleries. It's so funny. You go into gallery, they say crazy stuff to you. Like it's probably the same as like people coming into time bomb being like, listen to my mixtape. Right. Exactly. Yeah. You just look, yeah, it's just not going to work out for you. <laughs> and it's, you almost, you almost need somebody to like give you instructions. Like, yeah, Yo. You almost don't want to do that because you start to look crazy. You're you like, look, you feel crazy. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. <laughs> It just don't work out. That's what it was. When people in the mixtapes like, all right, dude, let me hear me hear one thing you're doing, and you're like, all right, it ain't gonna it, work out for you. <laughs> yeah, dude, you you had that experience in the beginning. Uh, yeah. I mean, I've walked into galleries where people have been like, you yeah. can go home. Like, we're not representing artists. Like, okay. you know, like, yeah, you know. I didn't know if that was like something that like was that was like how things like worked out there. Obviously it's different than, you know, the smaller galleries we have around here, but um, it's basically people approach you. People have to approach you. Yeah. People. And, and that's even for like this, this like the art world. So like behind curtains and stuff, it's like not like everybody knows and they keep it that way. It's number one unregulated. It's the biggest unregulated market. It's the only unregulated market. Right. So what do you mean by that? Um, uh, money laundering is a big deal. Well, I mean, big uh, part of the art world. Yeah. Like, and people just like, you know, storing their money. You know what I mean? And building yeah. the career of the artist while also putting paintings in their grandkids' homes or nephews. Yeah. The same people that keep buying and buying and buying. And they're the ones that's also making the value of the art. They're the uh, ones that getting that money. You know I get what, what you're saying? saying, yeah. Um, and it's the same ones over and over again. They've been doing this. They created the, the, the whole art market, like the, what it is in general. So, And there's no way to regulate it as opposed like the stock market. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? That's interesting to think about that. Yeah. So so with the galleries, like, you know, um, yeah, I had no idea how to get in it first. Um, and I would go look like an, you know, look like an asshole and like ask people and they would tell me, you know, some abrasive stuff like you need to get out of here, you know. It's that's just, the goal though. Like that's like the next step to be able to like, you know, sell artwork at a, at, at a premium, so to speak. So I, I thought so. Um, I, I, that's how I, like I thought that that was like the next step up, like the big step up or whatever. But yeah. But that was only a step into frame galleries and stuff, um, which is a totally different thing. So, like, I got the the name drop, or whatever. Somebody, another artist was like, "Hey, get on to AC Gallery. You know, tell them George sent you. You're gonna love your stuff. Once you go in there and say, "Hey, man, George sent me or something," they're like, "Okay, we'll listen to you." Yeah, um, yeah, that's crazy. Like yeah, that, it's right? crazy. And um, so <clears throat> these dudes give me a chance to show my stuff. But little did I know, there are friend, there's a lot of these galleries, man. So people buy their own art shows, right? So they'll just rent out the gallery and yeah. give them a couple thousand dollars. And they'll still have to give them 25% of what they sell. Wow. Right? So that's how like this first level of like the art were. And a lot of it in LA is like this. Like there's really only like a small, like fine art market. Everything yeah. else is just kind of like fooling people with smoke and mirrors and shit. Yeah. Um, Bringer shows. Yeah. So like you're not supposed to sell in these frame gallery shows um, because I, I I didn't know what this was. Basically, they brought me in. They're like, well, you have to we have to frame all your stuff, so you're gonna have to buy all these frames for all your pieces. Um, and I was like, what do you mean? I never you know heard of that. They're like, no, everything needs to be framed, and we're a frame shop as well, so we'll do it. Uh, they upcharge these frames on you, right? Mm -hmm. You're spending like a ton of money. So you're like, okay, so now I'm giving them like eight hundred dollars to show my stuff here. It just starts to feel like insane. Yeah, like and you're getting something's something's afoot yeah and like you know i didn't you know i'm like uh you know i, I it's not supposed to to work like this in, at all um you know or i didn't think it was and then you know you're i guess they don't care if you sell at that point because they already made their money off your yeah. frames right so 100 percent. like they're just here to have a good time they got sponsors buzz balls and shit you know so everybody's just gonna get drunk and have a party yeah so they're not thinking about making any money at that point um, and you need people that push people. You need a good negotiator. You need a lot of stuff in like that. People show that setting. want it. People yeah. that are working for you. You need it. Yeah. Yeah. But these dudes didn't care. I, I, I got lucky because I'm a collector that I, you know, that I had bought for me in the beach. Um, they showed up to my first show there. And the only reason I had my prices up, cause they were all like, you know, they, you had to make up for what you're already putting into it. I think I sold a $500 painting or something or like 70 maybe uh, $750 painting is maybe, that the most you've sold in that the was beginning? in the beginning I think I might have got lucky on a couple <clears> like that you know but then my friend was like man you got to sell this for $2,500 he was like you can't ask for anything less than $2,500 or something 
And I was like, damn, dude, that's a lot of money. Like, yeah, 20- like, where's your mindset in that point? Like, whenever you're like, as an artist, where obviously you're probably like feeling like, you know, you're probably feeling like, yeah, I'm an artist, but you're not like, you know, it's almost like fake it till you make it. Yeah. But, you know, like, what's your mindset about putting like a, you know, $2,500 piece of art in the beginning? Man, I, I didn't like it because that goes <clears> against like, it just makes you feel, as money will always make you feel weird about this, right? Because yeah. you know, once you get it and you start getting, you start thinking about it, it like consumes you and you're like, I need more, Yeah, right? because in the beginning, it, these are more just like passion where you're just like, I'm creating these pieces, putting them out here. If you want them for 15, it's it's a beautiful thing you want. Them. I'm just like, yeah, I can't believe you're taking this home. Yeah. Like, yeah, I can't believe you're taking this on a plane. Like, yeah. You know, but- it made me feel bad, you know, like, I, you know, like, dude, I couldn't buy that. You know, I could never buy that in a million, you know, like I, that's a lot of money. And, um, but the kid, it's my friend that told me, Kyle from Ocean City, uh, Maryland, one of my roommates, he was like the most spiritual dude I ever met in my whole life. Like literally just like, is only here to be a peaceful, like, and he's only here for a spiritual journey. Like he looked literally the kindest dude I ever met. Never ulterior motives nothing yeah and but he told me to do it so i was like <clears throat> shit man kyle's telling me to yeah i was like maybe this yeah. isn't some scumbag yeah, yeah, that's he, just trying to he's you know, like take yeah, your go, money go and get shit. the money you know what i mean go yeah it wasn't like that wow he that's just, pretty crazy he was just like this is a really great piece man like and i really think this, this is what you deserve for like what you should get paid for it and i was like all right fuck it we'll put that the price you know and i sold like two of them like in my show i sold two of these pieces and like um, your mindset at that period of time, like what, like my like, first show, I'm like, I'm thinking like, oh, like I don't do people sell at these. Is like, that the video where you're in a suit and yeah, it says a red dots? Yeah, dude. I was in a top hat yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Dude, yeah. That was, so that was like your first, like, you know, legitimate show where you're like, that was my first show. Yeah. Wow. And, and, and this is, de- this is separate from that frame show, right? This is that frame show. Oh, no, this oh, is that oh frame okay. Show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was the only dude to sell artwork in the whole show. There was like 30 some artists and it was Jesus. a group show and I was the only dude to sell something. And I sold multiple pieces. I was like, oh shit. Dude. And the big money piece, like at yeah, that for time. Me, I was like, that was insane, dude. I like went home and I was like, what the, f-? you know what I mean? I yeah. can't believe. So at that period of time, you sold those $5,000 or whatever sorts of pieces. You have to pay these people 25%. Yeah, you got to give them 25%. Is that customary in well, art dude, shows? It's way worse because the real art world, like the real thing, like now I can't get out of 50% no matter what I do. I stay independent as an artist and I still, I'm you not. You have to pay people 50% of 50%, what you do? Gallery wise. I mean, anything that I do through them, yeah, yeah. The gallery, yeah, I got to give them fifty percent. And that's industry, customary. That's industry standard. Yeah, sometimes they want to take. Uh, they want. They want to do sixty forty. Why is that though? Like, uh, because what is they it? have all the power. Like they, they, they want you to believe they have all the power when it comes to being able to sell you. They think like you're just some dumb. Like you don't like. I'm. Just yeah, that you're not thinking about this. Painting with just... blood and like I'm insane and like you know like I can't like <laughs> yeah. come out of the house. Dude uses vomit to paint. Yeah. Well, like... so I mean, like, but in this world, I feel like an art gallery is almost like like how useful is it compared to like. You know, we have basically art galleries if you want it to be on your phone. Right. You know, I see all your artwork on your phone. So it's like, why why go into this world where you have to give these people half of what you're doing? But I guess I understand it because, like, these are collectors. This is more more uh, more percentage or, – or not percentage, but more uh, – what the hell is it? There's more options for people to buy there, like collectors, I guess. Right. I don't know. That's interesting. They, they do have, you know, but it depends too. Because like I said, there's only a small percentage of galleries that are really like connected to something, you know, that, that that's what I would consider the art world. And then all of them are just finessing people anyway. Yeah. Um, that just want to show off for a weekend for their friends or whatever. Um, and they take people's money that way. But these, these people... Um, it's because it's all they keep it all behind curtains and mm. the, the average person doesn't know anything about it. we don't know i mean this is a big thing for me we don't know how i mean this creates generational wealth you know with jay-z talking about on 444 you know he's talking about i bought this painting that was worth two million three years later it's worth four million yeah you know uh, now it's worth eight million imagine how i'm feeling you know he's just like they, there have been so many people that have like just like cre- like that have kept the wealth in the family this way, um, and like the everyday person doesn't know about um, investing in an artist, investing in their career, and watching something appreciate over time. That investment come back to you one day, um, and you pick a good artist that's going to stick with it and stay with it and, and and fight to work, you know, to earn their place in all of this. Um, that's a good investment for you. Um, especially when you get them at a, you know, when you get it when it's affordable, 
um, because then it becomes something that's out of, out of everybody's price range. Yeah. And, um, but yeah, we don't think about like that and the investment in, 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 in into um, like into the arts. Like we think about like, <clears throat> think about, well, some communities will protect a rapper, right? Cause they see him like, think about what Compton did for like Kendrick. Or, yeah, like, yeah, I get what you're saying. You know, and they'll, they'll make sure cause they see him as bringing revenue back to the community one day yeah. and, be, and making it, you know, a, a, some kind of difference in this world and then being able to bring that home. Um, so the communities will like look out or whatever. Sometimes we forget that how lucrative like the art wor- world is like and how lucrative the art market is and how like, you know, a lot of painters don't come from, you know, painters don't come from, you, you're going to have a tough life or you're going to have a hard, you know, you, it's not always going to be, um, they, they don't come from these wealthy backgrounds yeah. all the time. You know what I'm saying? That's, it, it really comes it's from. It's almost like the musicians who like are really speaking shit are coming from like fucked up, you know, like beginnings. Right. Right. Know? Yeah. Yeah. So like, you know, um, so they're used to taking advantage of the artist and, and then, you know, keeping it the wealth, the rich just get richer. Yeah. And, um, but yeah, like I've been trying to get, I've given people paintings the whole step of the way because I think if it's going to be worth money one day, like say I give, say I pick and choose who I give the pieces to and believing in my own trajectory. And so I give um, a painting to somebody 15 years from now, 20 years from now, maybe they can go, their son, maybe even their son, their daughter, um, you could go like take out a loan and use that as collateral. If I, if that painting is worth $60,000 now, right? Yeah. Like that's a valuable asset and you can use that valuable asset to go start a business in your community. Right. So I'm, I'm starting to think like, okay, so maybe this will make a difference like in, in, in financially for people. I mean, it's not going to happen now, but um, just having the, try to have the foresight. Okay. If I do make this happen, yeah, the foresight. Like I want this, I don't want this to be, uh, I want this to change the right people's life and give it back to the ones that yeah. don't have it. Right? Chess, not checkers. Right. Um, so yeah, the art world, the galleries and stuff like that, they're, they're, they're able to do what they do because um, like I said, it's just all hit. It's most of it's hidden. Yeah. You know? That's interesting to think about that and to kind of hear that perspective of it all. Yeah. Definitely wild. That first art show was when? That was, ooh, uh, I don't remember when that was. I was like, what? Before the pandemic? Oh, yeah, way before the pandemic. Yeah, so yeah, like yeah, probably yeah. like what, 2019, 2018? Somewhere there, yeah. Okay, so if you're 2019 and like, you know, you have this art show and, you know, you make all these sales and it's like, that's like validation enough to know that like, you know, some shit is like about to jump off, I'm sure. Yeah. Well, and just, but also like, cause you think you don't know the context of things like really when you're fresh into something. So yeah, I figured like, I'm going to like, I'm going to take off right yeah. now or something, you know? Yeah. The, like, where are you at after that? Like, how do you approach like, you know, because if you sold a bunch of works, then it's like, I know you probably got a bunch of stuff laying around to sell, but mm-hmm. it's like, you know, what's your mindset? Like, are you like, all right, well, I got to just start like a whole new group of things or, you know, like, how does that, how does that like, validation right there and that success right there how do you uh how do you like uh what's the word how do you like apply that to your life and like how you're moving after that it definitely made me feel good about myself it made me feel like oh shit like you know because i had to explain to my parents like i'm not insane like that i'm all right you know what i'm saying like because there was like a long period of time with this stuff that i was doing this where i just kind of looked like Oh, uh, my son's on the beach selling artwork. Yeah, right. It, like, didn't look good. Yeah, it don't um, matter who you are. Your parents, like, yeah. they probably don't understand it. They probably don't understand it. Like, whenever I started this podcast, like, to explain to my mom and my dad what I was doing is just, like, it was just, like, it was foreign to them. It's yeah. just, like, they didn't grow up in that world. Right. You know, it's interesting. And, yeah. It's, like, what's it? Were they there for that art show? No, no, I didn't. I no. Just recently, have we started to make? I just i i flew them to L.A. like a couple of years, right before the pandemic. Yeah, for the I flew them. I paid for. It, I got them out here. Yeah, like that was the first time. That was you know no. That was just not. That was pretty recent. I just got them out here. Wow, out to California to see. Um. So did no, they no, know at that time? Like after you had that art show, did they know that you sold artwork? Or yeah, were yeah, you- yeah. Like I was constant. You know, con- you know. I would talk to them every day and everything. So yeah, like that, that proved to them like, Oh shit, I might be onto something like, actually. yeah, like a parent being like, mom, I sold two twenty five hundred $2,500 paintings. Like 
that right there is like, holy shit. Yeah, and I, I think they started to have the respect when I did, never gave up to Venice. And I, and I called my mom yeah. you know, telling her some of the stuff that would happen to me and stuff. And she, you know, she, I think she knew that like, you know, like I wasn't going to be denied like in any way. If yeah. I could go through that shit, like I'm going to, you know, be yeah, all right and everything it. else. Yeah. So I think they were already starting to believe, but it doesn't, it, it, it doesn't hurt bringing them, bringing money in you know what i mean because yeah like, oh okay like, yeah i get it like the figure is like nothing but it's like whenever you like have a product that like could be worth that much and you're like wow like it's like this is the level you know it's it's progressing and it's like you know the potential is endless with it all not saying like there's people that could be you know there's people just like you that could be on that beach for 15 years that no, there has been can't yeah. make you know that can't make it to that where they're selling, you know, pieces that much, you know what I mean? And that's like, you know, uh, and it's, it's weird to like put a monetary value on things, yeah. but it's like, that's just like in, in reality, in the world, it's like, everything is by money. And it's like, if you're doing these pieces, ha you know, gaining more for your pieces, the way I envision is just like a little bit more cushion for you to like, mm just dive into it even more into deeper parts into like, you know, completely fully immersing yourself deeper into it. Yeah. I mean, and that's when I, but that's when I really realized how much, cause that's when I started going bigger, right? I started yeah. getting bigger paintings and I started going like better supplies. Like I finally get what I want to get instead of just getting what I can afford. Yeah. And so that changed, you know, it, it doesn't really change that much cause you could do anything with any material. You know what yeah. I mean? It's really you. Yeah, but, but it's for you to be able to get, you know. But yeah, fire me up for sure. Um, it's also kind of like, they're always, it's all as much as it like, like, because I, I like to keep pushing and act like I don't got a chance and nothing, right? I, 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 I like to hang on to that, right? That chip, like, and I yeah. just drive with that thing. And, um, but like, yeah, so I was thinking I was like the shit, you know what I mean? I went to this after party and stuff. The only dude that sold work. I'm like, yeah, you know, on Sunset Boulevard. I'm like, yeah, I'm the dude, you know, I'm this, I'm good. You know, but we walked over there because we couldn't even afford like an Uber at the time or something. Yeah. So like reality sets in the next day when I'm like, I'm going back to the beach or whatever. You know, I'm going back out to Venice and stuff. So I felt like the shit for like a day or whatever. But then I realized, okay. So yeah, it, it did change like, you know, what size painting I was doing and definitely how I believed in myself. Um, I was like, okay, um, I think I can like replicate this success over and over again. Um, you know, even, you know, and it, this, I'm just really at the beginning, you know, so if this is where it's at now, like it really is going to get there. And this um, is three years ago. It might be like four years. The timeline is crazy, ago. man. Cause I, it's so hard. Cause I, I it's been seven years where it's, it felt like yeah, 60 it's hard to like, you know, place where it was in the time. So if you, you know, you go back to the beach after your first show and then, you know, you're just working, you mm -hmm. know, but you have, you know, better supplies, a little bit more, you know, accessibility on what you could use. Mm -hmm. It's like, what's your thoughts and like how you, you know, move forward from there? Well, it's like same. It's kind of like the same way it kind of still is now. It's like it, nothing, nothing really changes. You want it to, yeah. like you think like some shit's going to like change your life or yeah. you change it, but it doesn't. Yeah. But I mean like you, you eventually stopped going to Venice. Well, that well, that still took a while. So I still kept going to Venice, um, throughout the first couple galleries I showed at. So I was still doing Venice after this. I didn't oh, let okay, that, yeah. I didn't let that it, it take it away from me. Um, I didn't have that much ego and pride yet where I was like, I can't go back to Venice. Um, so that was still like my bread and butter. Like I knew that place was better for me than the gallery. Even though I was making more money at the gallery, I would come home crying after Venice beach because, um, because I would say the right things to people all day. Right. Like this is like the right stuff would finally come out of my mouth. So the wrong shit, you know? And it would like, I could see it like inspiring people. I could see people getting emotional and I'd go home and I'd like cry, man. Cause I'd be like, I'm doing something that matters finally. Like this, this really does matter. I wanted to be out of here back then because I was like, this is the best I'll ever be. Yeah. The most pure I'll ever be. Um, I could see like money down the line, pressure, stress, right? Even I could turn this beautiful thing into something that's like sad right again right so I, I could see what the world does to you i could see what so i was like i what i had on the beach then was like powerful and it was pure and i knew the money was dope but i knew i needed that was like really like where everything like where i was the best me was on the beach so um i didn't let them take i i, I didn't let anything take that away from me at that point yet 
I still kept doing shows and stuff. Even when they took me to Miami, because the next thing I did with that same gallery, I did a mural contest. Um, and the winner was flown to Miami with their work and it got put up in a hotel for Art Basel. They said it was for Art Basel. And, um, and I won that mural contest somehow. The next, the one I went, you know, painted a wall. They were nine foot by nine foot canvases, but they, they, they were like as big as a wall. Right. What'd you paint? Dude, I don't even know. Like I, I showed up, everybody had a crew of people, right? Everybody had an assistant and shit and like a big ma- like a ventilator mask and, uh, they had like a plan, like a, you know, they had dr- drawn out what they were going to do. I just showed up to this thing with like a scar, like a bandana and like no reference. And like, I was scared no as hell because I'm not a muralist, man. I couldn't like, you know yeah. what I mean? I'm not, I'm a painter. Like I, yeah, man, I just did some, sh- I just did these, like all these guys, like stand, like all these like figures kind of like standing there kind of like shadowy figures. I thought I did a terrible job. I thought, I thought I really like bombed this shit. I was really embarrassed. Yeah. <laughs> you thought that? Oh dude, I was I'm so, I was embarrassed. Yeah. Because I was like looking around and everybody's shit was really good. And I yeah. was like, man, like, well, these are mirrorless, you know, they're just good with the can. They're good with, you know, good with everything could hit, hit things the way they want to. What were you painting with? Just paint. Yeah. Yeah. I used like acrylics and then I was like, other using people were using stick. spray paints. Other people were using spray paints, you know? Wow. And I had spray cans too, but I just wasn't good with it yet. Like, yeah. I just sucked with the can back then. Yeah. Um, that's so, crazy. Yeah. They had like an auctioneer there and people were like voting on like which one like wins. I mean, I was the only one that sold. How many hours? I think it was like an hour and a half. Oh, okay. So it was like, yeah. Like, so it was wild. So you sold your mural there. Yeah. And it was the only one that sold. It was the only one that sold. And it sold at an auction. Yeah. Like who buys that? I don't remember who bought that piece. Is it just like an art person? Yeah. Somebody, I mean, I think it was just somebody. How much did it sell for? I think it sold for like $2,000. That's less than the, it was way bigger than the piece that I sold. Yeah. You know, the first show. But they didn't sell any of these murals, so they were just happy to get two thousand for it, right? Yeah, that's dope. But it, though. it won me the competition um, or whatever. <laughs> and you were, and you thought it was bad. I thought it was terrible, man. Yeah, like I still look at it, and I'm just like, damn, dude. I don't know what people like. You know, like I'm way better than this. <laughs> like I'm way better than that. Still look at it, like I don't know why that won. <laughs> yeah, totally, dude. <laughs> that's awesome though, because it's like I don't know. It's just like I, I, you know, to be humble is like something that's so like underappreciated because like, you know, it's, yeah, you could be like, yeah, dude, I'm like selling all these, all that. But it's like, I don't know. I always like people that critique themselves because it's like, it's so necessary. Like if you think your shit don't stink, then like, you know, it's not the way, those are not the people that I want to be around. Mm. You know, it's just like, I want to always be learning. I want to always be like, you know, gaining knowledge. That's why I just talk to people. It's like, interviewing people and like learning about other people's lives is the most fascinating thing to me. And it's like, I like, I don't have a notebook here. So it's like, I, I, it's like, this is all really like coming from inside of me. It's not just like, Oh, so your artwork right here, this one right here, like, what does this mean to you? It's like, right. this is really like, I, I like feed off of what people are passionate about and how it like fuels them. And it just like motivates me. It like gives me more, uh, it holds me accountable to like always appreciate what I have and like kind of keep, you know, progressing towards it. But uh, that's so crazy. So you won this and then you got to like, you know, what happens after that? Oh, well, so I thought I was going to Miami Art Basel, right? And yeah. I, I thought that was a huge deal, man. I'm going to Art Basel. Like, this is insane. I don't even know what that is. What is that? So it's a fair, um, and it originated in Basel, Switzerland. Um, and it happens in Basel, it happens in Korea, and it happens in Miami. Um, so it happens three times a year, huge art fair. And that's what these things are. I mean, now there's, that's what the art world really is, is big, really big fairs. And they have just the best art from around the world. They have, you know, um, blue chip artists as well that are, you know, past and you know, yeah. museums. Um, it's just really high end stuff. And all the celebrities go, you just Leonardo DiCaprio's always buying shit down there in Miami. I, you know, you just see stuff like that. But, um, it's like the biggest thing in the world for art, the Super Bowl, like for art basically. Yeah. Um, so I figured that's where I was going. Um, told me they put me up in a hotel and all, you know, and, and my work was going to go down there. Dude, I was so hype. Like I thought it was like the big, I thought like, I, this is really happening. I'm about to step into like some stardom or something. Yeah. Um, 
but they lied to everybody about like it was just in Wynwood. So like where the Wynwood walls are, where all the murals and shit isn't Art Basel is like an actual fair. Yeah. Right. So it's in a big convention center. And then there's other fairs around. We weren't even in any smaller fairs that aren't Art Basel. Mm. We were just in a little gallery like that he rented in Wynwood from Lombardi, uh, the, the Lombardi trophy, the, the, his nephew or something town. Wow. In Miami. So, right. So, um, yeah, they put man. you in a hotel. Well, they put me in a hotel with like 20 people. Um, and like, <laughs> dude, it was insane. Cause there's just people sleeping all over this. I mean, there was a ton of people in it there. was just one room. It was one room, man. Dude, I was sleeping on like the floor. I would be so heated. Oh, I was pissed. I bet you should be pissed. But I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't as pissed as other people because I was young too. I would have done, did that yeah, shit. You're young anyway. and you're, it's you just know? getting down there anyway. Yeah. I mean, like they I'm, pay for your flight over there. They pay for my flight. Okay. That's was great. And they yeah. pay for all the artwork to get down there. You know, yeah. They, that's they, dope. They, they drove it down there for me. Um, that's crazy though. You know how they, I, I saw something the other day that, uh, the people who win like America's got talent are supposed to win like a hundred thousand dollars, but like really the one dude won like 33,000 and like the rest went to like all this bullshit. I'm and, sure dude. And you know what I mean? So I, it doesn't even surprise me that you say that 20 people in this hotel room. Dude, yeah. it gets, it gets worse than this, uh, right? Because like this, like I said, they never were interested in selling art for anybody. Um, so when we were down there, we had all the, the whole week of shows and all the artists, they didn't sell one painting, like not even like a small painting, like not anything. Right. And I'm down there and I don't have any money. I'm just lucky that they brought me down there. Yeah. And, um, I'm tripping. Like I don't got rent. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, so this is like it's everything. Like you're wasting time. Like, down yeah. There. I could be on Venice beach right now making rent, you know, what, yeah. what am I doing? And, um, how long were you down there? Dude, I stayed for a couple of weeks after the Basel was over because I couldn't, I needed to make money. I need, I had, I, I needed to make, I could, I walked around Wynwood for, I slept on the gallery, cold gallery floor for like, yeah, two weeks after the event had ended. I walked around Wynwood with business cards and shit every day, asking people to come see the work. Um, I didn't want to go home. I refused to go home. I was like, I can't, this can't happen like this. You know what I mean? They didn't sell anything, man. Yeah. Um, I was messed up and uh, yeah, dude, I did everything I could. Like I didn't have any money left. It, it was just a bad situation. Didn't have a pillow. Use my backpack. Um, it was just a mess. And and after that all, you know, everybody was pissed about the situation and they didn't give me my art back for six months. They ha- actually had actually held it hostage. They had like a bunch of lawsuits because they held everybody's work. Oh uh, yeah. Right. But I, but I couldn't file a lawsuit because I couldn't, you know, I couldn't think of, thinking in the realm of going to get like a lawyer or yeah. some shit, right? I'm just like, hopefully I get that so back. So you're just, but this is like work that's potentially money that you could sell. Oh yeah. And I had just like, like I how many pieces? Uh, four or five, yeah. maybe six. Probably like decent sized pieces. Oh, big paintings. Yeah. 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 Big, 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 big paintings. And um, so they kept all my shit for like six months. And like I said, people sued them and stuff. I waited it out and I finally got it back. But, uh, that's crazy. It's terrible. You know, cause I, I thought I was going to art Basel. Yeah. Like, and it was going to be some like magical experience, yeah. but it's just like, <laughs> it was shit, dude. It was just drunk people like in Linwood <sighs> going around like, you know, and I realized like how important you need like a pusher. Like, you need somebody to come up and, and tell somebody about the artwork. Yeah. I could tell you I'm dope and I'm good at this. But, yeah. Like but you want to hear, you'd rather probably hear from somebody else. Yeah. You know, a curator and stuff like that. That's their job is to like, you know, I'm a little biased. Yeah. Shit, you know yeah, what that's I'm saying? Fair. Yeah. Wow. So, so and you, you know, that's the, a shame. It was a learning lesson. Though. Yeah. Learning lesson. You know? I'm sure you took some positive out of it for sure. I did. Yeah. No, I did. I, I realized it's okay. That it's like, okay to not be like, you know, cause I thought like, I'm going to sell every show. I'm a, uh, I'm a man. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? I ain't going to fail like nowhere. Yeah. And, um, and I was like, oh, check. well, yeah, 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 you are like, you definitely are probably going to do a lot more than you do win. So like get used to it. Um, yeah. So, you know, that was, that opened me up to these friends. I started realizing what that gallery was like, this ain't real, you know, this ain't a place for me. Like this ain't even, I don't even know what I'm doing here with these people. And, um, and then moved up to the next, uh, gallery, which wasn't a frame gallery. A nice lady it just does it for the right reasons, but she don't have any intention to really do anything, but like a small show once yeah. a month or whatever. She would take 40 for me. And, um, I would sell stuff through her, you know, and 40 is a better deal than 50 with yeah. the bigger gallery. So I worked with her for a while and, um, 
yeah, it was just, it was stagnant. Like, and she basically told me I can't do anything for you. So that, that was short lived. Yeah. And, um, where did I go next after that? Are you, are you like selling stuff online? Never, man. Never. I don't sell anything online. I sell nothing online. I mean, I have a website. You choose not to, or because people don't buy online. Uh, but kind of both. Like, oh, okay. I, I haven't used a computer to buy online. Yeah. I haven't used a computer since I was probably 18 years old. Oh, wow. Um, I don't have a computer. Uh, I don't have a laptop. I don't like my phone. Like I, I don't like, I genuinely don't like the feeling I got when I'm holding it in my hands. Yeah. I've, I've come to, I've come to be that way too. The most I ever see from you is on Twitter and I enjoy that. I tweet, I dude, it's so funny because I, I, a lot of young artists follow me and shit. So I'm like, if I'm going to be crazy and just say how I feel like maybe some young artists could sit. Oh, I love what you say on Twitter. You Today know? is the day. Today is the day. Yeah. yeah it's dude. like, I, I love that. And I, you know, it's, it's, it's cool because it's like, you know, I, mm-hmm. in this world <clears throat> of social media, it's so fucked up because it's like, you know, you have to have, the social media it's like and it's it in the beginning you know five six seven eight years ago i was addicted to my phone i was addicted to displaying things you know just like having it up there but now it's like i don't even want to be on it i wish that i could just that's why i don't do a video podcast it's like i don't want it i don't that's so extra but it's like i realistically to progress i need to eventually get and transition to a video podcast but like I don't even want to be on my phone to do with it and to, to mess with it. And it's just no. like, it's terrible. No, it sucks, man. Like it, it totally, uh, yeah, so, I mean, it's great too. Do you have all that information at your face? Yeah, it's, it's cool, but it's like, I, but I get it, but it's also like, it also kind of, it's a double edged sword, yeah. but that's wild. So galleries and like just in person, in person, man, Venice beach. I mean that, that create, that set me up real well. Cause yeah. uh, all that, all those days I spent on that beach, people weren't buying stuff for much money. Um, you know, every single person that has stuck with me. And I think that that the craziest thing is that people have stuck with me for so long. Like these people that met me when I first started this on the beach, you know, and I was just young and wild, my hair all knotted up, like just a weirdo. And they, they, st- they, st- they, st- they stuck with me all this time. Right. And like, <clears throat> I genuinely have a core group of people out there i don't i don't have fans i don't have like you know i'm not like that big of a you know but there's people that appreciate your work there's enough people that um yeah appreciate my work uh you know i saw some wild shit i saw some lady on cnn with one of your pieces behind yeah. her yeah so that was on like every major news publication That's she crazy. spoke was speaking for mary trump she was married Trump couldn't speak for a gag order or whatever. Remember yeah. she came out the book and yeah, she was that like and all that. the tell all book about Donald Trump or, you know, yeah. she couldn't speak on the news. Alice, my collector was her friend. So she spoke on her behalf. That was, uh, that was one of my favorite pa- paintings as well. I got Faces. that sitting right there. Yeah, I, got, I brought you one of those. Dude. An OG one too. I mean, it, it doesn't look that, but this is an OG one. You can put this away and just keep this for a long time. Dude, I'm going to keep all this shit because it's like, I, I, you know, I, I really am, you know, a fan of just like what you have done and like worked up to. And like, I just love it because like, I don't even know how to describe what this artwork is. And my, my wife went to, uh, IUP for art history and Spanish, but like, she don't even, she don't even do any of that anymore. She works at a bank, but like, it's just like, I show her anytime I'm having people on, you know, I get hype about it. Like whenever I have people on, it's like, I, I like, kind of step into their world as much as I can. And I try to just like really like learn who they are so I could like give a great interview of them. And I was showing her all this and she was just looking at it. And she was like, this is insane. And the way she described it is big brother. Have you heard some, have you heard that before? Like big brother, like almost like eyes, like, you know, like very like, like, like watching you. And I don't know. It's just like, I wouldn't even know how to describe this style of work. Like, what do you describe it as? Now, dude, I describe it as now, um, cause I get pretty hard on it and stuff. Cause it, it's, it's some of it, a lot of it's like ugly, you know what I mean? Not, not ugly, but like not pretty. Right. And, um, it's, 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 it's just like, I, it took me a while to realize what the meaning like to me was, but I think that's how we all feel right now, man. Like most of the things that I make, like, it's just, it's like a lot of static, right? It's a lot of confusion. It's a lot of, even in like your moments of like peace and even in your moments of downtime, 
notifications, like thinking about like whatever million other bad thing that's going on in the world. Like it's just so much like, and it's over stimul. Everything yeah, is over everything's stimulation. Everything's over stimulation. Man. And so we're real disconnected from reality uh, and, and, you know, and what's important. And I just like, even when I'm cool and I'm, you know, you won't think there's anything wrong with me, but this is how I all, this is how I feel in this, this world, like for real. Yeah. Um, so I think that it's just like marking the times, um, like it's just, you know, what, it's what, what artists have done forever is just kind of depicting um, the times that they they lived in and what they've experienced and stuff. And yeah. I think that this stuff is like a good representation of like what we all lived through, like in, a, in, in the general, everybody that's here now, you know, uh, except for maybe the little ones or the real old ones, you know? Um, yeah. I think it sum, sums up the madness of it all, man. And um, like, there's that hope, like it's not dark or nothing. Like, cause the hope is that, um, you know, well, this is just, I mean, to me, it's all, this is just a test. So as bad as it gets and as painful as it gets, it's all temporary, right? So it's, the, 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 it's, it's all always be a blessing that we have this ability to experience being alive, right? Yeah. And um, being able to feel, to be completely flawed um, and perfect. And um, yeah, it can feel so bad, man, here sometimes. But like, yeah, I mean, I think this, I mean, it, it just represents like, you know, like uh, it's, it, it, it's, it's, it's temporary and yeah, it's just, it's just not pretty. And it's just, um, so much static, man. Um, that makes sense. Um, yeah, yeah. it makes sense. It's I, a lot to it to like try to put a label on what you put on there. I, I also, it's more, I also like, it didn't get not to get crazy and shit, but like, I also believe these, these beings like exist, uh, like they're like mirrors of us, you know, like I, I don't think of, so we got all these dimensions, man. We got all these different universes, yeah. right? Like 100%. In, in our, just our dimension, we got all these different universes. And then you go to like, you know, yeah, think it's, about just, it's literally endless, right? So there's something looking back at us, you know, that's a huge, that, that, I mean, I think everything, man, whether it's aliens or whatever, everything's experiencing life, like yeah. everything, like we limit it to being like, oh, humans and just animals and shit, are exper- but like anything that's out there is experiencing life. Right. And it's like, it's like a lesson for them as well. Oh yeah. Um, so, man, I think, like, this shit could be, like, interdimensional, like, sometimes. You Where know? it comes out of you. Yeah, and I see other artists and stuff. Like, I look at George Kondo's work, and, like, I know that his stuff exists out there somewhere. You know, I know that that, um, and then I, I experience that that world myself sometimes. Um, where, like, the beings are, like, from the same damn place. Like, you know, it gets weird, man, because I don't, um. So that's another thing. I think that it's really coming through another place. Like whatever that's I'm channeling, you know, it, it really is coming from somewhere that I couldn't even really imagine. Right. But I also, and a third thing is I, some of these, sometimes these things are like, you know, that's me. That's a self portrait. People always ask that self portrait is a self portrait. Like, yeah, I guess it's a self portrait, but like, that's a mirror too. You know what I'm saying? Like it's a mirror. It's a self portrait. So it really is the same thing, man. Like it's the same thing. Cause think we got, we all got different shell. Yeah. Different problems kind of leading to the same things is do we learn the lesson? Do we not learn the lesson? Um, <clears throat> you know, different faces, different personalities and stuff, but it really remains the same. Like what do you, you know, we you giving life like in, um, you're going to go through like pretty much similar things, challenges, trials, tribulations, you know, um, so yeah, man, it's just the experience of life. And, and to me, it's the experience of life right now, 2000, where, what year are we in? 2022? Yeah. Whatever year. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. crazy time to be around. Yeah. Now, I mean, like for you to, uh, you know, kind of, you're obviously, you know, you've been working ever since, but it's like now the point you're at now, you work it from what I can gather online is like you go in your back lot and you just work from sun up to sundown yep. and you just grind. So yeah. like, you know, like where are you at in the point where, you know, now that you have been in this game a little bit, it's like you kind of have experienced things that were kind of like, you know, weird situations. Mm-hmm. You've experienced slimy people, I'm sure. Yep. You know, you kind of know the ins and outs, but it's like being like someone that's kind of still new at this, where are you at in your career with this like are you somewhere like you still try to get into art shows or are you just like you know like how do you how do you approach where you are now where it's like you're an artist that is doing this 
as a career, obviously the goal is to make money, but like you're also an artist. So you're creating things in real time and trying to stay authentic. You want these to be real pieces rather than just like pieces that you're making to make money. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, I, I might not be like, you know, describing what I'm saying as well as I should be. How do you still say like true to what it is? So what I learned, um, you know, about this now I have like less ego than I did like when I first started. Right. And, and, and like to be humble, it, it's impossible not, not to be humble when you do this like 365 days of a year. Yeah. Most of those days I'm not good at this. Right. Like I have days that are just magic and everything goes right, but there's way more days that aren't good. You know, that I see the holes in, in my abilities and I see how far I have to go. Right. And it's just like every day, man, every, every single day. And, uh, you just, it's not magic like that where you go out and it's just smooth. I don't even think it is for anybody. No, I mean like even, even musicians, like the the albums that we hear, like, you know, if we listen to an album, 20, 20 tracks, there might be a hundred behind it Mm -hmm. that are just like never going to be heard of. But you know, those are just things that people had to get out before they got out this, like this piece, the one that you're seeing. Yeah. Oh yeah. You got to just like clear, clear the way for things. Um, and then the, the, you know, the, the, the really good stuff comes. Do you just have like a crazy amount of works in progress? Oh yeah, man. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Tons of them. So that was my problem. Like for a while, honestly was, um, I start some, I mean, I work when I'm, when I'm painting, I have like six large scale pieces out there with me Yeah, right? and I go back and forth because I don't know which one's going to work that day. Yeah. Like for real, that's how I look at it. Like, Oh, this one, I might, I might, fall into the craziest groove on this one and then I might look at this thing for three hours or and whatever just pop over and, it, it. and only make it worse like I, I know that I'm only going to make this worse because I just don't I just it's just not feeling like it's not coming through Nothing, things aren't working yeah. for it right now so um but then I'll still try and then I'll ruin the piece and then I gotta come back to it anyway so um I have a ton of stuff with me at all times um you know just so once I take a break on this one paint's drying on this one I hop over to this one get more work done there, hop onto this one, keep the, you know, they're all different flows and stuff. So you keep you know? all, you, you have all these multiple ones up and like they're, you're always usually working on bigger pieces mm-hmm. and like it, you know, so you just, it's wild. You just pop over to, to whichever one is like coming through at that time. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be like, you know, like it's like a feel like a feeling like the door's open here, but like the door ain't open over here. Yeah. You know? Um, is there times that you like ruin a whole painting and just start from completely scratch or? Oh yeah. All the time. Yeah. All the time. Like I'll have a good painting and I'll think like, well, that came like too quick or something like, you know what I mean? Like that I could do, like I got, I'm, I am better than that. I can't do that better. Yeah. Um, and then like I'll ruin it or whatever, you know, I'll go over it. Or I'll scrap it and I'll go back and look at the photo a couple of days later. I'll be like, damn, like that was really good, you know? And I painted over it. But, um, it, not to say that that won't come back again, you know, because yeah. some, some of these I work on for months, right? Yeah. And I put a month into something and or two months into something and it never works out, right? So it sits for six more months until I bring it out again, sand it a little bit, yeah. paint over it again. And now we just got crazy. Now we got like four paintings behind this one painting. If you X-rayed it, it would be insane. Yeah, just, just layers so, of it. Layers, so many layers. And it's like maybe a piece from that previous one might work with this one. And right, like, like the know. new flow that I find yeah. was the one to complete this one that I could not go anywhere on six months ago. That's right? wild. So like even stuff I left here in Pittsburgh back in February. Yeah, so yesterday you were painting. Man, yeah. So like just finding it and be like, oh shit, like I was afraid to touch that. Yeah. Because I knew it wasn't good enough, but I knew I didn't know what to do but now it's like you wait till it's presented to you in your mind yeah like 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 till it till that door gets opened yeah because you feel the resistance of it right and sometimes you go towards the resistance in this world right yeah. you go towards it because that's the stuff we don't want to yeah because there's it, it, you know you're trying it's i call it resistance training man yeah, you either run towards it or you run away from it right but then you, there's sometimes you got to know like okay, man, like, you don't see, like, you don't get this right now. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just not even coming to, like, it's not, you're not even able to, like, see it the right way right now. Yeah, you got cynical, blinders cynical, You know what I'm saying? Like, you just step back, yeah. fresh perspective. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. But then my head's also like, you know what, dude? Like, 
I could put more layers in this painting than anybody's ever put into a painting. Like, you know what I'm saying? What if I did some like real like, you know, what if this leads to, I always think there's this way to make like the, the greatest thing that's ever. Yeah. Like, there is no art subjective. There is no greatest thing. Yeah. Um, but in my head, I'm like, I'm going to come with the, the, the fucking craziest one, dude. Like ever that ever been, everybody can agree on. <laughs> this is the great, the greatest painting that has ever been birthed. Well, you know what I mean? Into, into, into existence. Like this is it. But um, that's just how I like, you know, how I get hyped up to go into it. But there is no. Uh, yeah. It's, it's, it's chasing the dragon, man. You yeah, that's what, I mean? what it is. Maybe, maybe like, the next one. Maybe the next one. It's like one. you build up the motivation for yourself. But realistically, it's like, you know, it's like what you're putting out only gets to a certain level with people that's never going to touch the level that you're at. Right. Yeah. And it's it's interesting to think about that, though, because it's like, I don't know. It's wild. You, so like... <clears throat> It's it's wild to think about like you know you spending months in on pieces and then like leaving them go for months mm-hmm. and then like popping back on them and it's just like it's crazy like like how many like works and progresses do you think you have right now like is it just like like an endless amount yeah yeah I okay. couldn't give you a number because <clears throat> I, I just got so much stuff and um, you have your own studio right now it's 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 kind of like my own yeah yeah it's my own studio i mean like is this just like so like is this just like uh like 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 did you create an environment in there or are you are you more of like the product of your environment or do oh, you create yeah. your own environment i'd say it's both um well i say it's both mainly for the fact that i have like kind of an unconventional studio yeah um, so my my studio is still outdoors yeah um you know, what it was originally was the alley gallery when I was in that apartment in Santa Monica when I started. It was yeah. just an alley. Um, wasn't even like mine necessarily. You know what I mean? It was just like me. I was just that, that crazy kid out in the alley fucking painting on trash. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and, and uh, you know, now I'm, I don't feel much different. You know, I'm in, a, I'm in this parking lot, you know, which is, it's a nice space. I have a nice setup. You know what I mean? And it's like, it looks beautiful. Anytime you're posting. Yeah. You're in the sunlight. It's beautiful yeah. out in this parking lot. So, so I got to be outside unless I got a warehouse. If somebody's willing to give me a warehouse first. That'll be my first like real studio. I need yeah. a big space, man. You know what I mean? I need, I can't have like ceilings that I can like you yeah. know, almost jump up and grab. Yeah, like, it needs I, to be open. Yeah, like an man. old church or something that's just like deconstructed. Yeah, real dude. tall ceilings. Because because walls are limiting. Yeah, man. ceilings are limiting. Like, come on, I can't. Like, I can't think in here. You know. Yeah, that's fair. That's it's fair. Like, it's it's like it's cool to think about that outside. Like, I I have noticed that it's like I've never seen anything of you painting inside. It's, and like like the other day you posted that about them turkeys. You looked yeah. up and you saw them turkeys. It's like yeah. being outside, just like allows for there's so much more potential for like things to naturally be introduced to you yeah. in life you know if you're just in a room it's like that's your that's your sterile environment mm-hmm. whatever's in there is in there nothing else is coming in stuff. a door yeah, yeah you got doors in there but it's like a gust of wind could pull a vibe out and push yeah. it away it's i love that it's really cool in 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 this day and age like like i feel really lucky i spend every single one of my days and i hear the whole day I hear birds chirping. Um, I hear kids playing, riding around on their, you know, their bikes and stuff, laughing and shit. Um, the whole day, you know, people walk, anybody can walk up to me. Anybody. Yeah, you your can tweets are wild. Shoes. Yeah, you can, you can walk. And I like that, man. I, yeah. like, I like the ability. Um, because that, the experience of that, just walking up on a painter and being like, what's up, dude? And then have just them being open to be like, yeah, yeah. come in here, man. Come You're check living this in out. an unscripted world right now. It's like whatever, you don't know what's going to happen every day. No, I don't. And I need that, uh, some aspect of that. It's not as crazy as it wasn't in Venice. Yeah. But, you know, I'm <laughs> I still bet. like microdosing it, you know? <laughs> um, microdosing the crazy. Yeah. That's funny. And, you know, um, yeah, I think, it, uh, you know, being, being outside, it's like weird because I, you know, I don't feel like I have a real studio. And I feel like I can't believe I don't have a real studio. I feel like I've done, you see, I go back and forth in my head. Like, and I probably will a lot throughout the podcast. You'll be like, damn, this dude's a hypocrite. But, um, but I am. And we all, you know, I say yeah, we all. I, but- I just feel like that you're open. I don't think that you're necessarily a hypocrite, but I feel like that you're just so open that you're, that you're, that it's, it's, you're just open for it to be changing. It's like you're, it changes. you're fluid with it. Yeah, like, it's going to change. Like, yeah. But it's interesting because it's like you're you're the you're to this point where you're selling like you know paintings for like five figures and like you're like oh 
I don't have a studio necessarily. I'm painting in a parking lot. Yeah. But like there's something so like raw and beautiful about that. You, you need to, I mean, like there's no way, you know, I see there's, you got the biggest thing you do for this, like for, as an artist, the most helpful thing is you need a re- like a real life. Right. And when 2022, we have like so much less, ex- less chances at a r- real life, you know, like everybody's like in this bubble and then like, everybody's just kind of like saying the same phrases and shit on social media. Like everybody's like watching TikTok Dude, videos. People don't even communicate anymore. This is a, I mean, it's not necessarily a lot lost art form now because like podcasting is making some crazy resurgence, but yeah. like think about it. It's like, I have friends that like, you know, I'm not the, I'm the dude who doesn't want to text. I'd rather call someone. Mm-hmm, me too. And it's like, that's like unheard of now. Like I have friends that hit the fuck you button and just text you and say, what up? And it's like the, the, the spoken conversation with people is just like a lost art form. It's like writing a letter almost. It's like, I love, I'm fascinated by just, it don't even matter who you are. I could literally, you know, my wife, she cracks up because I'll just start talking to anyone, old <laughs> ladies, old dudes. Like I am fat. I'm like best friends with my neighbor. He's like 71 years yeah. old. I love it. And people don't do it anymore. It's mm-hmm. like, everyone's just on their phone. And that's why I fucking hate this thing more and more every day. Because it makes me just like, this is what's so messed up about it. You know, I left group chats. Like I I was in a group chat with like, you know, seven of my best friends for like, you know, since you could be in group chats and I just left it. And it's like, you know, part of me is like, you know, I I feel like I feel disconnected from them all now. But it's like, you know, part of me is like, you know, I'd rather just fucking text you. I want to connect with you. I don't want to just, I don't want it to be okay where being in a group chat scratches that itch of me being connected to your life. I want that different level of us being connected. I don't want it to just be a group chat friendship thing. Right. I want us to spend time together, good time together and like be with each other. And a conversation is the same way, even though you and I uh, just met each other today and like, we don't, we don't really know each other. It's just like, this is a concentrated dose of that it's like being connected in this way it's like i'm looking at you while you're telling me about this right that's why i don't do a zoom interview that's why i don't do bullshit like that it's like i this is a connection that we have for a couple when's the last time you had a conversation that's like three hours with someone right that you're just like you know really like present in this moment it doesn't happen man and it, it, not in this day and age yeah. anymore yeah, and I, and you see, like, you know, people don't even have that much of a chance at it, right? Like, how I was able to find, like, a real life was, like, looking, like, in, you know, out, out in the trash bin, basically, you know? Yeah. Like, I found a real life by grabbing a little corner of Venice Beach and where most people would, like, not be able to deal with people thinking that they're, you're homeless or you're, you're, you're a junkie or you got this problem or, you know, people automatically just assume like wild shit. Right. But like putting yourself out, that gave me real life because like everybody, you, 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 you gotta like have these personal connections with everybody. You know, I'm not texting these people down here, you know, yeah. like it's all like, you it's know, a connection, a personal connection. And, and so it's so tough to find, man. I, I like wish I had more of it like I'm glad to be outside and stuff and um but yeah man like even I don't get enough of it um myself and I just that's all I look for is just being able to uh, yeah like just like relate to somebody like I love just like you know what I'm saying like showing I it's cool being like a painter because it's so weird but then I love being here and like relating to people that have are just a blue collar like worker I think I'm like this weirdo but I'm like dude believe it or not like we're Pretty we're similar. doing the same shit, dude. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, it, it, you know, like we're, we actually probably have a lot. We share a lot of the same ideologies, like all kind of stuff. That's what it is, is all the ideologies that everyone shares in <clears throat> their own way and how they apply it to their own life. And like, that's what's fascinating. It's like, we really are all like, I mean, realistically, we're all just trying to figure shit out. Everybody. And no like, matter how old you get. Exactly. Too. Yeah. And you think about it now, it's like, I've been really, I've been having this like realization recently where, you know, I remember whenever my dad was, uh, whenever he turned 40 mm-hmm. and we put in a newspaper, this thing, he turned 40 and I was like, man, 40 is old as fuck. And now my brother is about to be 40. Yeah. And it's like, That's- I'm 32 
And it's like, I'm going to be 40 sooner. You know, time just gets so crazy. It moves fast. Like, yeah. uh, I, I've been with my girl for nine years. We we're about to be married for five. Like our five year anniversary is coming up next month. And it's like, I feel like it was just yesterday we got married and it's like, I don't know. It's just crazy. Like time, time is wild. You know, being an adult is wild. And just thinking about whenever I was a young kid thinking about my dad at 40 and like where they are and like our parents just like figured shit out. Yeah. And uh, it's just wild to think about that because as an adult, like we're like, you're becoming an adult. I mean, you are an adult. I'm an adult. And it's just like, it's weird to figure shit out. Yeah. Especially in this world too. It, it's yeah no there's no <laughs> there's no instruction guides or there's no you know no google for that shit you yeah know, you just kind of it's important fails. to talk to people though and it's important to be like connected with people and like kind of keep that going yeah your, your brain don't like you like your brain don't want to be here you know what i'm saying like yeah. your brain is gnarly like i don't know who told me somebody told me your brain is always gonna try to eat itself like it's like natural like way is to like consume itself right so what you believe or what you think is not true all the time yeah and you wouldn't know that Unless you were to go out and get other people's perspectives and opinions and see the world through their eyes for a second, right? If you yeah. didn't have the ability to be able to do that, um, fuck it, shit, thoughts, things would just eat you, eat you up. Your brain, like literally, and it's like science, like your brain will eat you up. You know, like you, 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 you have to be able to see it in different ways. Um, and yeah, we don't get that enough, like, you know, because of social, nah, man, social media and stuff, like we're all using the same phrases yep. for everything. It's a like, blessing and a curse, though, it is. You know, yeah, it's strange, man. What, uh, so, you know, like, uh, like, do you, do you experience, do you experiment with psychedelics now? Um, not as much anymore. Yeah, um, so like, it's not something like you said before, whenever you did that, whenever you, like, the first time you took acid, it like was kind of like a breakthrough a little bit. That's all right. Um, it was kind of like a breakthrough, but it's like, I just wanted to know if that was like something that like, you know, your artwork kind of like hinged on was like you, you know, kind of, you know, tripping or something like that. You smoke still? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Okay. So it's like, you know, your process throughout the day is like, you know, what do you have? Like coffee in the morning? Like do you have Yerba a ritual? Mate. Dude, I drink a lot of Yerba, uh, Yerba mate. mate. The mint? A lot of it. Uh, yeah. Sometimes mint. Yeah. Like I any, any Yerba Mate I can get my hands on. It's tough, tough find here yeah. in Pittsburgh, but um, I fucking love Yerba Mate. Um, but no, there's so much of a ritual. Like now it's just like I wake up in the morning and it's now like I wake up and it's like get to work like my Today girlfriend never sees me in the morning um she doesn't get to wake up with me like you know You're what I mean early riser I'm out of bed yeah I'm, yeah me I'm, too I'm getting moving and um like you know and then and then it's the whole day you know what I mean I have a little bit of peace in the beginning like a little and it, you know I think Do you about, live close to the studio uh, it's right out back oh okay yeah yeah okay, it's right go. out back yeah so so it's like you don't have to like have the you can just it's like, like home walk studio. out and start yeah yeah that's yeah. Uh, that's dope or now is now are you someone that like do you do like how do you like this is hard to say like do you like turn artwork off at all do you like no. do you like watch tv like shows yeah. things like that well that's what i mean whenever i say turn artwork off like are you like you know watching like binge watching shows and stuff like that not so much anymore um you know, I, I need that time with my girlfriend, right? Yeah. So I'll come up like after a long day at work. Yeah, I've like, seen well, traveling stuff like that. It's dope. She's working, grinding, being mm -hmm. like, I know, I know she's on like uh, Sephora and stuff like that. That's yeah, dope. yeah, she's had a couple really good jobs. Super dope. Yeah, um, it's like it's cool that like you have someone that like you know you guys are both like boot like buzzing around and like you know doing cool shit. I just didn't know, like I honestly did not know. If you were going to be like, I haven't turned on the TV in like seven years. Well, it, it's crazy <laughs> you say that because I like I just like the pandemic was was when I got my first TV uh, since okay. I've been in LA. Um, like the first time I bought like a TV uh, in however many years that was. Yeah. Um, just because I like, yeah, because there's too much other shit. I, I, I don't, and I, st I, I, I'll spend time with my girlfriend. Like I'll come up and we'll watch shows and we'll hang out. We'll get good dinner. We'll go out, you know, have nice meals. Yeah. And, um, <clears throat> but I don't, it never goes out of my head. Like I'm always thinking about like, I'm always guilty. I spend my whole existence in this world guilty. Yeah. Guilty that I'm not working. Guilty that I didn't finish that shit up. Guilty that I lost that flow or guilty that I'm not spending enough time with the people that I love. 
Yeah. And so like picking and choosing all the time, it, it's tough, but it, it never goes, it never, you, I can't go away. Uh, can't turn it off. It's always it there. Off. Like, it's just like the fabric of my being. Like, it's just like, ingrained. Yeah, it's ingrained. I love that though. You, blessing dude, and a curse. Yeah, blessing and a curse. You can really tell though, like, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be dope to keep watching, you know, where you're going to be in another five years. Mm. You know, definitely impressed with, uh, with all you do. And, uh, I don't know. You, what are your goals? Do you have goals? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, like, and I've had a lot over, you know, my time, my, my, you know, one of my biggest goal, um, and this is a big reason I want to do this podcast is because like one of my biggest goals, um, all the stuff that I went to go experience and all the stuff that I've learned, um, that I hope that it is making me not just a great artist, but uh, a good leader. Um, and I hope some of the things that I've learned uh, will be valuable to put to use. I, I, I hope to come back here um, and do a lot for this art scene here. Like I plan to do everything for this city um, that I can. Um, you know, it's really, really important to me. I take a lot of pride in being from here. Um, and I think I embody, uh, you know, who we are here a lot. You know, and as a painter, I feel like that's, not always the case, you know, you wouldn't think an artist, you know, so much, you might think of Andy, you know, uh, Andy Warhol or something, but I, you know, I really, um, I have big ambitions for what I want to do for this, you know, for all the young artists in, in this city. Um, I think I owe it to the people here. Uh, and I think I owe it to all my friends here as well. I know that it, it, it's, it, it, it's me accomplishing more, um, and getting enough that I can come back and give, give back the way that I want to, um, so I know that it might take me a long time, but that like, I will come back and, uh, you know, bring everything that I've learned and everything that I, you know, I, I bring resources here for people and, and not only here, but like, I want, you know, I need to help those people that struggle. You know, I, every day in LA, I see people struggle and, um, I see people dying every day. I've seen people dying for a long time. And a lot of those people on the, the beach took care of me and, um, you know, I wanted to have some kind of like rehab thing for people out there, you know, that you could come in and get free materials to work all day instead of yeah. just drinking all day, instead of just whatever it is, you know, sitting in the sun and roasting all day, you come into this big space, you know, and they Create give something. you, they give you free materials, right? As long as you're willing to commit to it, right? As yeah. long as you're willing to you show up and you do <clears> it, um, and they can have free materials or whatever, a place to be during the day, a place to get out of the sun, um, and they can even take that stuff that they make and they can take it out to the beach and they can give it a shot and make a little bit of money for, you know, their well-being and to change That's things. That's super dope. Um, so that was always a big thing for me as well. And like I said in the beginning, um, just making sure that if my material or monetary su success in this world um, has any value, which I'm not sure um, it does, but if, it, if it's going to have any kind of value to me, I mean, at least... Um, then I want that to, you know, um, allow people to think about, you know, how they go about their life. And, um, like I said, given the, I, I, I don't want the same 10% of people to be buying and owning my artwork and it to be in some storage unit, um, and some rich persons, you know, whatever. Yeah. I want it. If it's ever going to matter when it comes to money, I want it to matter for the people that don't have it. Um, and never even had the financial literacy and it's you know to be able to understand this right because it's just um yeah too many people struggle you know what i mean it's it's really the 90 percent of people that are struggling and it's really 10 percent of people that that are not yeah and um so just trying to like i'm one small cog but i'm just trying to change shift that balance um and if more people see it the way that i see it you know and you gotta play this game but I'm playing it in the way that I think will benefit the people I want to benefit from it. Not the same way it's been done over and over again. Yeah. So hopefully even just changing, um, having the chance to help somebody's future, man, have them start a business, have, you know, whatever it may be. Um, and my goal is my last thing. My goal was just to, 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 um, to, to, to live, to, to finish this thing out like the right way yeah. and to never lose that. Cause it's easy. People come, they come with money. They come and tell you, they make you this, they do this, they'll build your brand, all this stuff. So the goal is to end up the same way that I am right now, you know? Um, 
to not go down that road. You know, that's really the main goal is to always this to be like Stay what true it's to meant yourself. to be. Yeah. And not all the other stuff. Because, you know, what matters is the it's it's all built the foundation's built on genuine connection. It's not built off of um like, oh, I'm, f- I'm going to be famous or this. That. It's built off of like, no, nah, man, like. Good people. Good people. Like, yeah. yeah. And just. um, A community. I'm here for the people that say, I can't draw a stick figure. You know, like, ne- yeah. oh, guess what, brother? Neither can I. Like, you know, and look, look what I've been able to do, you know. So um, the limits, you know, break, break barriers, limits for people and introduce a whole new generation maybe here in the city to. Yeah, it's it's art. wild. It's really wild that like you really didn't have a uh, background in artwork and like you know, with some with some grit and some like uh, some heart, you know, you're getting to like where you are now. Sheer will too, man. You, yeah. If you wanted something bad enough, you got it. You got it. And as long as you can believe, whether it's a placebo or not, like it becomes everything. Like it becomes yeah. your life. So, yeah, not everyone wants to go through the mud though. They don't want to make it out of the mud. And it's like, that's, that's where, that's where it kind of filters out. But the people that do go through it, it's like, you could really tell. And it's, it's powerful to hear from them and talk to them. But, uh, um, is there anything you think I forgot or anything we didn't touch on that you wanted to? Um, yeah, uh, no, I just, uh, let me answer your question one more time about the, I uh, you know. I guess we got it all. I don't even know what I said. What? Yeah, I was gonna say that that question before I used the bathroom. I don't know if I answered it well for you. Like, what's it like on a day to day basis? Um, like yeah, with full my circle. Studio. Yeah. So, so, so what it's like for me on a day to day basis is, um, it's almost like I'm not here a lot. Like I'm almost on Pluto or something, right? I'm almost um, because I don't understand my place in this world. Um, uh, people will buy my stuff for ten, twelve thousand dollars, right? But people still come up to me outside the studio, and they 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 don't know that I do this for a living, or they don't think like, you know. So I'm always going back and forth, like, what is my value here? Um, you know, uh, you know. I look around LA; everybody's got a lot of people have money. You know, it's just, it's, it, everything's expensive, so I. It's it's weird because I don't know my place. But I don't think I'm supposed to be knowing my. I'm just supposed to do my job. Like yeah. my job is to make uh, artwork, and I and, and it stays real out there. And like I said, I stay humble out there because um, I really think people look out their windows and my neighbors they see me and they they think like, oh man, oh, that that psychopath's out there again. Force, you know, this is like. 800 straight days he's out there like again you know because they don't ask me about what i'm doing or these things can get weird when you lack a community and stuff it's um so i feel a lot of different things every single day um when i'm doing what i'm doing um you know uh i don't know where i fit into anything um, but but i but i keep will keep fighting for my place in this world um you know so some days, you know, I'm just a dude off the street. Some de- some days, you know, I'm gonna be the greatest, and uh, it's a weird it's a weird line to walk. You know, knowing you know the Venice stuff, and knowing to some of the people that I sell my I sell my artwork to some really wealthy people too. Um, it's a weird line to walk. Uh, you know, but. I'm going to just work hard like every day. Yeah, I'm going to just keep doing it every day. You know, it, I don't think, I, I'm not supposed to think about those things um, so much, you know. My it's pl- interesting to think about them though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I mean, I struggle with it a lot. Like where, what am I? Like, am I like, my, my, my poor, my poor dude? Am I, what are we wealthy? Am I, am I fucking insane or am I doing something that might be you feel insane genius? yeah oh yeah I know I am I know I know um because what you what is the definition of insanity exactly doing That's the same I mean. thing every day uh, expecting yeah. a different result or whatever you know so like yeah like in in the in, in the end of it like and I I think all paint I, painting is such a weird thing man but I, all painter like Dali saw everything as a rhinoceros horn Everything, dude's talking about everything's a rhino horn. You could get into it, but it doesn't make much. You know, he's just he, yeah. 
thought that everything in the world had to do with the that's insane right yeah so like yeah some of this shit you know i realize it's just a growing thing and having so many older artists i just collaborated with gino mouse a 75 year old sculptor down in new mexico i saw that that was wild um learning from him he put four kids through college as a sculptor um kind of a similar story started you know didn't know he was ever into art became this has been doing this for a long time 50 55 60 years and um this is forever. Like, this is forever. It's going to take a long time. You know, I'm going to be like him if I'm lucky and be old man, old man, like still even crazier than I am now. Yeah, just out um, in the back studio creating work. Yeah, like I, I'm, I'm aware that this will be my life every day for upwards of 50, 60, if I'm granted that much time, you know? Yeah. Um, and I'm game for it. I think that's the best thing. You know what I mean? I think it's, it's so exciting, man, to see like, yeah, man, you, there's so much further to go. It's in, it's unbelievable. Um, but I don't realize that now. I think I'm out of here soon or whatever. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's a weird thing, dude. I feel like an old, old man. Well, but, uh, you had a lot of years, a lot yeah. of years out there. It's like dog years. Yeah. No real shit, but I also feel like a little kid at the same time too. Like I also feel like a little fucking kid that just got his first fucking pencil, you know, color pencil set or something. Like it's it's well, it's the best of both worlds. It's the best of both worlds. Yeah. It really is. It's like you know the you know the dark and you know the light, and mm-hmm. you you apply it to when they both need when they both need it. Yeah, not afraid to spend the time in the dark, you know, to 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 be able to appreciate the light, you know, I mean, be able to appreciate like you are at the will of other human beings with this job. If other human beings don't like what I do and they don't, you know, then I won't eat. Um, you know, so I'm really at the, you know, strangers, you know, I'm at the, the, I'm at the helm of strangers. I need, um, strangers to support me and make sure I eat food. Um, you know, which is crazy, you know, because it's, yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. And, um, yeah, man, you know, it's a wild thought, Uh huh. Like but it, that, I feel like that, that just, you know, that just speaks to how you, it's all about communication. It's mm-hmm. all about community of it. That's what it is. And I will say one time too, like this just happened to me recently. I almost made a hundred thousand dollars last year. And, um, you have this shit's insane, man. Like I have not had a good year this year, right? Yeah. Um, how could you have that good of a year, one year, and then like have nothing going on the next? You know, it's it's. But I have paid my rent, or I have got the money from my rent on the thirty first, over ten times since I've been an artist. And my parents and you know my my girlfriend can attest to it. Um, I'm never not taken care of. But that doesn't mean I'm not pushed to the very limit of my sanity and how much faith I can have and how bad I want to do this. Um, because they will push me, and I say they, my you know, my angels, God, or it's just maybe that's just how life breaks. But um, I am pushed to how much do I really love this and need this? Like, and will I keep up with it? And I'll pay, my, if I have to pay my rent on the 31st, every month for the rest of my life and stress that out and, and hope that I'll always know it's going to come through. You know, I may not have excess, but I'm always taken care of. And, um, you know, that's important to keep an eye, like your eye on too, because you, you, we get so much lust, so much, you know, we need everything and you really don't, you know, when you realize you're always taken care of, that's like, uh, that's a really beautiful feeling. That feeling beats, um, the big sales like any day just knowing that there, there, there is a purpose there, 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 there's something to see in me you know something to see in the work and seeing the effort and you know it's the little things in this life that keep you going because you, you you know it, it's it's a long one it's a long road it is a long road <clears throat> it's an interesting and uh it's a uh it's exciting yeah it's exciting if you want it to be you know mm-hmm. that's what it is but uh yeah, it's in, it's I don't know. I it, you you uh you were it like listening to the way that you 
speak about where you are is just kind of cool to hear because it's like, I don't know, you just seem so like open and like so, um, what's the word? Like just, I don't know, just just ready. Like, like I don't know, I don't even know how to describe it. It's just cool to hear how you talk about it. You know, it's it, it is it's dope. I appreciate that, man. I do. I appreciate like you know, not everybody would even want me to be probably like on. You know what I mean? I just like like I said, like, I feel like I'm talking in circles sometimes, and, uh-huh. and and some people don't like when you know you're real open and stuff. Um, so I appreciate you for giving me a chance to be. Um, you know, I wouldn't want anybody finding out or hearing about me to know me any other way. You yeah. know, like this is the first time I get to speak to uh, like a Pittsburgh. Yeah, audience in general. general op- you know? I mean, this is this is the oper- this is like how I kind of wanted to, you know, create something that, you know, so like 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 I love things that people do. You know, rappers. You know, chefs. You know, beekeepers. You know, haunt people that run haunted houses. Like mm-hmm. I, I love the products that these people are passionate about and put out into the world that's their lives so it's like to hear about why they're passionate about it and how they do it and all like the bullshit they had to deal with along the way and the perseverance and like the good and the bad about it it adds such a more it's like color in a picture Mm. looking at something that's just like you know blank you know what I mean? It's like you you get so much more out of it. At least I do. And it, and I've been fortunate enough to have people like want to keep listening to this. And like, it's been enough, you know, it's like my Venice Beach, you know, it's yeah. like, it's what it is. It's like hearing people like hit me up saying that they loved hearing this and like seeing the numbers like grow. And like, it's just like motivating to me because it's cool that people enjoy because I, I literally you know, I'm the same way. I, I just did this shit in the beginning. Did not care how it turned out. I just knew that like, I wanted to do this. This is like, this is why I started it. So people could hear the behind the scenes, how the sausage is made. It's, you know what I mean? It's yeah. like, it's like everyone sees your paintings, but like no one really understands the process of how you got there. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's cool to be able to kind of have a hand in, uh, giving people that opportunity. No, I'm I'm very grateful for it. Honestly, um, I'm grateful for you coming over and spending some time with me. Um, we do, uh, you know, at the ending segment of the podcast, I do an ending segment with everyone. It's called Desert Island Questions. Let's so, do it. <laughs> so everything, you know, we're talking about like all like this philosophical life right. type of shit. You know, this is this is an opportunity to you know fill out a little bit more as uh, of your personality. So desert Island questions, whenever I give each guest three categories to take with them on a desert Island and use until they starve to death and die. So the first category is three movies. So if you get a little DVD integrated TV, like 12 by 12 TV, you get three DVDs to watch the rest of your life while you're starving to death and die on a Mm -hmm. desert Island. What would they be? Oh man, it's a tough question. Oh, Cause I, I'm, you know, I'm big on movies. Movies been like a big salvation for me. Um, but then you always see new ones. You always get new favorite movies. Uh, yeah, there's been some good stuff. I've been watching some good movies lately. Let's say we'll take, we'll take that. We'll take. Um, Cause I want to. There's like I want to say baseball movies, right? I want to say like. What's your I favorite grow, baseball movie? Sandlot. I could take the Sandlot. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We'll go with the Sandlot. That's a good one that you could watch. I could if it's on TV, it's always on. You know, right. I, I always put turn it on. Coolest experience ever is they showed the Sandlot at PNC Park on the Jumbo Tron. Oh no, shit! It was dope. It's like it was wild to. I I, I got to go down and watch that, and it was a cool time. <laughs> Dude, I want to say weird shit like striking distance or something. <laughs> Even though it's so like I found out I was in that movie, like that's why like it's in my head. Dude, I mean, you couldn't Fuck. even imagine the answers that I get on here. You literally couldn't even imagine. Striking distance is a good one. I mean It's not I, even a good movie though, but it's cool because it's like oh Pittsburgh. Yeah, it's like, it's it's like, like sudden death. It's like that's sudden like death. a top that's like a top ten for me. Just because it's like nostalgic. Pittsburgh movie. Yeah. yeah. Oh shit, man. Um 
he said I wanted to say striking distance. Like, how weird is that? Like, what, what, what else did I say? <laughs> oh, damn, man. I always like Be- Belly was one of my favorite movies. Oh, uh, yeah. You know. So good. Honestly, the opening of that movie. You with the blue? With the uh, hardest. Yeah, black lights. And hardest. Shit. Dude, I th- yeah. So Mike hardest. Jones, is that, is that who? Uh, yeah, it was. Yeah. That shit's dope. Yeah, it was. Man. It's been a minute since I watched it. Man, what are some fucking classics? I guess Stand By Me is a good one. That's amazing. Sam, we'll go Sandlot, Stand By Me. I love like the kid, like the the groups. Like, uh, have you ever seen a movie called The Monster Squad? No. Dude, it's like, it's it's the Goonies, but it's better. It's really? like these kids have a clubhouse and they just love monsters. And then like all the real classic monsters come back and they fight them. And it's like an 80s, like kids, like, and like, like, it's literally like the Goonies, but it's just, it's so sick. Monster Squad. I'll have to give that a shot. You got to watch that. Dude, I might go with Tupac Resurrection. Honest to God. I've watched it like a hmm. billion times. That did save my life too. Like when I was the sickness thing and everything. Like yeah. He, he was like, you're going to change. Like, I was like hearing him be like, you're going to change the world. Like, you're going to be the spark that changes the world. I was like, all right, dude. <laughs> I will like you know I was he was like talking to me or something but that that's not the right one either. Damn dude I freeze up on like a lot of shit like That's when, all right we got a we got a got a few questions so. Oh, okay that's easy. We'll go once upon a time in Hollywood. Mm. Stand by me in the sand lot. That's a good one. Yeah. Those are that's a good uh that's a good variety. Yeah, you, I could watch that movie whenever see it. Once upon a time in Hollywood's dope. Yeah, I like that. That's a good one. Okay, uh second category, do you read it all? Yeah. Now, I usually ask people, uh, you know, to name a book or two that they would take on a desert island. Oh, oh shit. All my books are like... Uh, That's fine. They wouldn't lead to... Don't matter. Whatever you, you want. You need to be all like inspired and shit. Or... Most important book ever to me is The War of Art. The uh, War of Art by the Sun Tzu? Art. No. Oh, sorry. The Art of War. Art no, of War? no. Art of War is Sun Tzu. Uh, okay. The War of Art is another book about oh. how to f- survive and like how to live as an artist and how to live with doubt and fear and, and, and all that. Oh, wow. Um, and how to drag yourself, how to crawl through the fucking mud. You I know? never heard that. Yeah. The war of art has been, um, the most, you know, I've read that book at least six times. Um, huh. I'm yeah, going to have to check it out. Yeah. People used to like bring it to me and give it to me and be like, you need to read this. And I'd be like, I have that book. Like, it's like, a, now, now I would give it to other people. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's fucking, War of Art is my favorite book. Hmm. Um, All right, that's good. You got any other ones off the top? Um, Did you have a book growing up that you liked reading? Yeah, dude, I don't know why I can't think of anything. The only fucking book that's popping in my head is Hatchet. Do you remember Hatchet? Oh, Jerusalem? I got it. Oh, yeah, I got it. The only book from them, but there's that one book, man, that was like, oh, The Alchemist, man. The uh, Alchemist. Like, okay. that was, that, that, the Alchemist has been important. Okay. Um, yeah, fuck it. We'll go with the alchemist. That's dude. good. Yeah. Those are good answers. The 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 art of war or the war of art. Yeah. I'm gonna have to check that out. That's interesting. Okay. Uh third category is three CDs. Three CDs. Fuck, dude. Now I'm thinking about my first three my first three CDs were like fifty cent, get rich or die trying. You already know. Uh what's the M M&M and M one with the curtain cur- cur- curtain, yeah, call? curtain call? Curtain call. And then it was fucking like a chingy C D, like ho- the holiday inn one. <laughs> Those are my first three CDs. <laughs> Dude, I just found a, uh, I, 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 uh, I just found some of my, like my old CD book. Uh, it was randomly under my wife's front seat. I don't know why it was under there, but I started looking through it. I got so many like old mix saves and shit like that. Just funny ass shit. Dude. That's, yeah. Uh, the, I mean. Jock are, jams. You ever hear jock jams? Oh yeah. I know that that is. Oh yeah. <laughs> I uh I got like I was looking through the disc book and I got like all the fifty eights like discs and uh and I was just like man it's just like crazy to look at all these mixtapes because it's just like a moment in time you know if you put in a mixtape and you listen to it it just reminds me of like you know high school friends riding around and shit like that I don't know it's sick though C- CDs I'll go with um, the Hendrix Experience. Mm. Um, I remember I stole that from my dad and ran that a lot throughout my high school career in the car. And then I would go the very best of the doors. Mm. And then I would go with, we'll go with, um, we'll go with swimming. 
Yeah. For Mac. Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. That's a good variety of uh that's a good variety of music right there. Yeah. And um there's a lot of other ones I could pick, but those are three cool ones for me. Yeah. Those are good answers. Okay, uh third to last question is uh something called the Death Romeo. So uh, the death row meal, uh, you, before you get put to death, you get one last meal. You get an appetizer, main course, and a dessert, and uh, it could be literally anything you want. All right, let's go appetizer. Yeah. Uh, beets and burrata. Oh. Uh, is that all good? Yeah, fuck it. Beets and burrata. It's not bad for the last one, right? Right. It's good. Last meal. Beets and burrata. Fancy. For, yeah. For, for the meal. This breakfast is going to sound kind of crazy. Breakfast anything. sandwich from this place in LA called Mill Cross. Mill Cross. Mill Cross Kitchen or Cafe or something like that. And they have this La Bamba. What's that? Dude, it's insane. Like, it's like, um, it's got chicken and like the eggs oh, are enveloped. Wow. The, uh, the chicken's enveloped into the eggs with the cheese. They have like these special like aiolis that go mm. on it. Um, it's right up my alley. Pickled onions, I think, are on it. Oh, dude, it's just such it's the that best sandwich like I've ever had in my dude. I've I spent like over thousands of dollars getting these little bombas. Mm. So if I had to die, if I had to go out of here and I got the chance to eat, it would be a little bomba. Okay. I'll crazy. give you a few of them. Kids struggling cool. out of three of them. La Bamba, uh Mill Cross. Um oh. let's see what else. Oh, you didn't have to give me three of them. Oh, yeah. I said, I said, I'll give you three sandwiches. Last meal. Oh, give me three of those. Yeah. Oh, hell yeah, dude. That's a good last meal, right? Oh yeah. Okay. Go out full. Uh, are you? Are you? You guys are big food people. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. I like. Uh, that's like what me and my girl do. It's like go out and just have like the best food you could. It's the best thing to do. It is. It's just a fun time. It's like uh, everyone talks about how like you know you go on dates and shit like that to the movies like even whenever before you were with someone you're like going on new dates to movie. The, the movies was the worst dates ever. It's like, you don't even need to talk to people or nothing. It's like dinner is perfect. Yeah. And you remember it forever. You, remember it. It's good food. You know, it's, it's all great. Um, what's the dessert? Dessert would have to be, I'm going to go with the ant. Oh shit. I'm going to go with the anti food option here. We'll go dirt. Dirt like like Oreo dirt. Dirt, yeah. Wow, it's just been so long since. Just because I, I was just dessert. thinking about it yesterday, and I was like, "Damn, I, I dirt was good." Like I remember, like you'd wow. find it like picnics and shit. Yeah, like a know? grad party randomly. Yeah, yeah, dirt. That's Man, a, have you ever had a poke cake? No, what's that? It's like a yellow cake, but 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 like after the yellow cake is cooked, you like pour Jello over it, and it like and you put it in the fridge and it like hardens and it's not like jello it's like yellow cake but it has like a texture in it and then you put like cool whip frosting on it and like pretzel pretzels in it no no, like, no 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 that's pretzel salad but pretzel a, poke salad. Cake, a poke cake is like uh that's like a people either know about it or they don't but that's the most unsung that's the most underappreciated picnic food but a dirt i haven't had dirt in probably like 15 so years so good that yeah. that are bread pudding Oh, I'm going to have to bread. make some dirt. Oh, what's uh, bread pudding um, with croissant uh, bread pudding? Or no, uh, yeah. croissant? French toast bread pudding? Oh, that maybe. There's probably both of oh, them man. now. Bread pudding's pretty good. They do I just some... got a DiGiorno pizza that's a croissant crust. It's like I They're just croissant. saw it randomly. It was on sale. I was like, all right, I'll buy this. It was really good, though. Really? Oh, yeah. It's good. Um, all right, so... Uh, Last uh, question that I ask everyone. If you could have a conversation with anyone alive or dead, who would it be and why? Who would I go with, man? I don't know why these questions are so tough for me. That's why I ask them. These are the hardest these questions. These are the, the hardest ones. Because I, I feel like I'd answer this question. Either. Like, you know, I feel like I think about that. Like, oh, man, it would be so cool to go back and talk to whatever. You know, now I'm, you're asking me. I'm like, who the fuck was I thinking about? Yeah. It's um, interesting that people are always like, man, you would think I would know movies and like CDs. And I can't think of nothing. The reason I don't tell anyone about this in the beginning is because like, you know, if I, if I mention like three CDs, it's like, it's like what pops into your mind. Right. And like, that's where it is. Yeah. So I'm the, I'm giving you like the, I'm thinking too much for these. I would have to go with, uh, shit, I would want to say Nikola Tesla, maybe. <sighs> Bro, you need to listen to the episode I did on him. I, whenever the pandemic was happening, I couldn't bring people in to interview. Uh-huh. I knew nothing about this boy and I couldn't bring people into interview during the week. So like 
I was laid off and I was like, I can't, I don't want to not put out any episodes. So I just did research episodes. So I did like one on pyramid schemes. I did one on like Tony Robbins, did X-Files one, but I did one on Nikola Tesla, you know, read his book. You just deep dive into it. And like a wild dude would be one of the most fascinating people to talk about. I don't know if I'd be smart enough to be able to like hold a conversation yeah, with him. Yeah, might be a little bit like, yeah. It don't matter though, but like that would be the wildest. Yeah, I would go with te- Nikola Tesla. 100%. Honestly. That would be such a good answer because like, you know, I often think about, people ask me like, who I, who would I pick? And it's like, he's always in like the top 10 list of people that I would pick, but I just feel like that I would be too t- too dumb to appreciate it for my one last conversation. Like I'd probably either pick like, you know, like Robin Williams or Richard Pryor or something like that. But it's like Nikola Tesla is a fascinating dude that people don't even know about him. Yeah. No, people don't even know about he him. Spent some time, he spent a good bit of time here in Pittsburgh. hundred percent. Um, Wild ass dude. Fell in love with a pigeon. I got a Tesla, co- uh, the blueprint to a Tesla ah, coil tattooed. That's and dope. It says, uh, I belong to the world. Um, that's dope. Because that, you know, that was supposed to like you be, know, that was his for belief for everyone. Yeah. And then so, people were like, nah, dude, we need money. Right. <laughs> you know, exactly. let, me, let me snuff you out. <laughs> right. Yeah. Fucking terrible. It is terrible. terrible. The world would be different. Um, that dude, that dude died poor. I know. That's insane. Yeah. It's insane. Literally the reason that we have, you know, everything we got. Um, but dude, I, I could not appreciate you know, talking with you more. Like I had a wonderful time talking to you. I know that you were saying like, I hope it was good. I hope I wasn't talking in circles. Like yes. you're a fascinating dude. And I'm like very, very impressed by like, you know, the work that you're putting out within the time that you're doing it. Because like, you know, I've been, I've been following along since before you were, you know, selling like big name pieces. And it's like, it's cool to see the progression. And it's like, you know, I always love reading your stuff on Twitter. And like, that's why, like, I keep, that's why, like, I kept hitting you up because like, you know, I could tell, um, that there was something there that like, I wanted to like, you know, expand on. I wanted to hear like how you got to where you were because it's fascinating. I appreciate, you know, you giving me a chance, man. Really. It's like, I'm a chaotic person. So the reason it was tough to get it even together is just because I'm like, that's all right. I'm just chaos. Like, there's people like, tr- like, try- like, can I give you this money, like, for this painting? And I'm, I haven't responded to them. No, I get it. Like, it's, it's this. Uh, I appreciate that. I but don't know why that's I just like a. That's an attestment to like me, my interest, and in, like in in you. It's like I wasn't gonna. It's like I swear to you, it took me, it took me over three years to get Sally Wigan on here but, from the first from the first email. But I like don't let it go. I'm persistent. You know, if it needs to happen, it needs to happen. That's why Brick, full circle, Brick is going to get on here. I'm going to get Brick on here. You should add in there that I would really like to thank uh, Time Bomb and Brick and Billy Hoyle um, for really opening up my eyes to a whole world and giving me a place to be. Um, You know, and I hope that's your next guest because Brick, um, without a doubt, one of the most uh, interesting human beings I've ever met in my entire life. I'm not sure you could get uh, a better guest. I know. And And, that's why I mean, I'm persistent with him. I'm going to make it happen. Yeah. Got to happen. But uh, take a second and, you know, tell everyone where they could find your work, where they could find, you know, your Instagram, Twitter, anything you want to promote. You can, uh, you can check out my work at Steven Um, you can also, my name, Stephen Jess Kolsky, is my Instagram. Jazz Blues is my Twitter. Um, your best bets to find me, somehow find me in real life. Um, <laughs> if that's tough, you can find me on social media. Um, and DM me, it might take me a little bit to get back to you, but I will 100% get back to you, and I'm grateful that you even reached out. So don't trip on that. And also, um, for all you Pittsburgh folks, uh, Tyler Podomic, um check him out he is one of the best um artists in this entire city and you will know about him before sooner than later so you can get a get a little bit of a jump on that tyler podomic i'll put his links below yeah i'll give you his thing too yeah Yeah. i'll put all the links below you know people could scroll down click your link it'll take you right to your stuff and then uh get check out your work but 
I, uh, I appreciate you. I appreciate everyone listening as usual. Uh, you know, each and every week we're back with good people doing good things. Uh, thanks for listening. Call you right back.